guys and girls, and welcome to episode 98 of the F Reality Podcast. This is a weekly VR, AR, and MR talk show, live streamed every Saturday on YouTube, Facebook, and on Twitch. And I'm also super excited to announce this week that the show is being aired for the first time in big screen TV. So yeah. congratulations, guys. Awesome. So thank you to everyone that are joining us uh, live on today's show. I hope you enjoy this one. Uh, you can tune into the show live at 7 p.m. in Europe, 6 p.m. in the UK, and 12 midday in Central US. You can also check out the audio version, which is on iTunes, SoundCloud, Anchor, and now it's also on Spotify. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback during the show, please put them in the chat. We'll try and answer as many questions as we can. Now it's time, of course, for me to introduce you to the team. First up, this guy is the captain of this fine vessel, traversing the murky waters of the internet to bring you the latest VR news. He's the VR Captain Sparrow. It's, of course, the ZimTalk5. How you doing, dude? You right? Why, thank you, Mike. Yes, um, I'm, I'm great. I'm great. I think um, sailing is, is definitely something that I wasn't expecting to do this week. Um, but when, <laughs> <laughs> when the closed beta for Battle Week dropped, jumping on to the helm of a ship with my good friend Dr. Oculus, uh, we did. We sailed the seven seas. I will report back on that a bit later. Yeah, definitely looking forward to hearing your thoughts on that one for sure. Um, so next up, you shouldn't underestimate this guy. He's definitely much smarter than he looks. He's a scientist and newly founded Minecraft VR addict. It's the rowdy guy. How you doing, man? You all right? Yeah, I'm, what, what do you mean much smarter than he looks? Like, what, Let, where did that come about from? It. Let's be honest about it. You're the pretty one out of the group. You don't look like you're the brains of the group. Let's put it that way. <laughs> okay, okay. So you're saying now I'm pretty and I got brains. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like the ultimate combo. Yeah, yeah I actually dove a little bit back into Minecraft, but uh, I'll talk more about that uh, later on. Yeah, looking forward to that as well. And next up, back from his adventure at, at VidCon and flying the Millennium Falcon at Galaxy's Edge in California, it's, of course, my Friesian friend. It's Nathy. How you doing, dude? You all right? Yes, I had an amazing holiday. I'm so it was jelly. so much fun. So I'm much so fun. Jelly. It was the best vacation I have ever had. And yeah, I, I was also at VidCon, but it was like super short <laughs> to speak there at a panel about VR. Yeah. And then after that, I disappeared into the Millennium Falcon again that I have been controlling for like five, six times. So yes, great. <laughs> Do you feel uh, like refreshed from the trip? Yes, yes. I. It's funny though that this week, a week after my Disneyland adventures, uh, I, I still dream about being on rides at night. I'm not joking. I'm sleeping in a very strange way at the moment where every time I jump out of bed because I need to go to the next ride. I'm not making this up. I'm, I'm really doing that. <laughs> your, your mind is still there, but your body yes. is in the Netherlands. Yes, there was this one moment where I was so, so confused that I, I looked out of my door and I thought I looked into Main Street USA. Amazing, amazing. Yes, right. that's how fun it was, basically. I'm now mentioning like rows of kids and Nate just going like, move out of the way, everyone. Like, move out of the way. <laughs> Pushing them aside. Elbows first. Elbows this is my first. fast pass. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, last, but by no means least, myself the, myself, the host of the show, Mike from Virtual Reality Oasis. We've got an interesting show for you today. We're going to be talking about the rumored specs for the upcoming PSVR 2. We've got some good news about an upcoming fix for the Oculus Rift S static issue. We discuss our thoughts on T for God on Oculus Quest. Zim's going to give you the lowdown on the releases to look forward to next week. And we're going to talk about Facebook Reality Labs unveiling of a wrist-mounted haptic feedback system called TASPI. So, uh, of course, let's start the show by finding out what everyone's been playing this week, their highlight of the week. And first up to the plate is Zim to tell us all about Battle Wake. I'm looking forward to this. So, yeah, see, he's, about it, he's ring fenced me so I don't talk about Vertigo, which is fine. I'll give it to somebody else, but uh, I will have comments on that too. Battle Wake, right. So uh, what is Battle Wake? First off, uh, Battle Wake is uh, Servios' latest. It is a uh, seafaring adventure. You take command of a vessel. And um, it's probably the first game, I didn't I didn't get to play like the 2D or flat game Sea of Thieves. But looking at that a lot, because it hit large on Twitch and I was still on, on Twitch at that point. And um, 
And that was like big, and I was like, oh, it would be great if this came for VR. And then like shortly after, they announced, you know, Battle Wake, and I was like, sweet. And um, so this week they they opened up to people who had like pre-signed up for the closed beta. And so I got into that. And so you got like four ships, and you can pick your galleon, you can pick your, uh, your, your, your floating vessel, and you can pick your captain. And the captains each have special abilities, like there's one lady who does the, the classic Kraken arm that can take down a ship and all that kind of thing. I guess the real question though that people are gonna be wanting to know is Like how immersive is it? Is it is it really good? Do you feel like you're the captain of the vessel? What are the mechanics like in terms of the you know people on the ship and I have to say that like as an arcadey combat sim It's pretty neat. I was expecting something slightly different in that I was expecting to to be one of the crew of four on the ship it right. not for everyone to have their own independent ships like floating about, and so, um, even, you know, playing it, it was very much the experience that's there, which I think was called War Something. I don't remember exactly the full the full name of it. You know, it was myself, Doctor Oculus, sometimes two other people, and and it's like four of you versus basically an oncoming wave of AI, which to me is a lot less interesting than like four v four PVP or something like that. So I can only talk to the mode that obviously is is out and available now, and you can play it. If you do have access, first off, check your email. Uh, you can play it single player. I, I liked a lot of what it had to offer. So, for instance, like the Kraken, when you summon it, it's freaking huge. It's a massive thing. I love the like fact that you've got guns on the front of your ship that differ from your sides, which are usually the like cannons and stuff like that, and what's on the rear, which sometimes is like giant cannonballs that have a slow recharge <laughs> rate. And you, you pick different ships, so they each have different like special abilities. The skeleton one puts up spikes and like the shield that then explodes, and so it's quite it's quite active. It's quite cool. You go through like three stages, and so like initially, let's say you're taking out enemy ships. Second, you're maybe taking down, you know, a fortress, and you're actually assaulting like a castle and trying to break it down, and you see the visual damage and all that. And then you get on to like a final boss in most of the most of the runs, and so you try to take someone else out and you take down that ship and they've got like you know 10 times the health of your ship or whatever so it's it was fun like you guys like you guys can probably expect from me my biggest complaint with games like this is when you don't have the ability to take a hud down like there, there's mm. enough like aim the projectiles it, it shows you you know how far your trajectory is going to be where it's likely to land i'd love the ability to take mm. that stuff away and wipe it clean so that i can focus on you know, when I've got an enemy ship or even a friendly coming mm. at me, like to ram me or whatever, and you can like pull these chains left and right to do a hard, like almost like handbrake turn in the ship, which obviously doesn't exist, but you could do it. Um, so you've got that, and and it is like your your, your ship goes all the time. It's like a, it's like a car in automatic or something. It's just like <laughs> pulling forward always. Yeah. You can pull both brakes up to like slow yourself to a crawl, but you're still moving forward. And so that was probably one of the noticeable things, which is like they want the battle to keep moving and I kind of wanted to be able to as someone who knows how to sail like I learned how to sail when I was living in the Caribbean um, they don't do the doldrums effect at all so like you're always soldiering forward they don't pay attention to wind at all in that game so it's quite arcadey so those things I kind of wish there was a, like a kind of like War Thunder there's an arcade sim mode I really think this game would benefit for people like me from having something like that where you you clean up the HUD so that you just see ships in the water because their mm -hmm. graphics are really nice. Like all the scenes, all the characters, the different special animations are cool, but they're covered up by, you know, when I'm hitting an enemy ship, it's pinging out damage numbers like in Robo Recall. Yeah, so. yeah, but I think um, you know Servios. They're um, they 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 make arcade games, right? You know, they've got a series of arcade. Yeah franchises vr arcade franchises so yeah. it kind of makes sense that they would design games for those for yeah. the views and but i think i think covers. it's a fair point that zim is making that that is that is not something that like the vr gamer at home really wants what mm -hmm. we really want at least when i speak for myself and i think i speak for zim then as well is we want immersion we want to have the feeling that we're on that ship and we're gonna battle against other ships or battle against your friends or whatever and you want to be you don't want to be the ship you want to be on the ship as a as, right. a, as a person and controlling that into an environment that feels like you're really there. Mm -hmm. And if it's arcadey, that 
I understand that when they have arcades, they want to like get more into that kind of thing. But mm. for people at home, I think yeah. they. they but that's want that's more. what Servios makes in the end. You know, Creed was an arcadey game. Uh, Sprint Factor was an arcadey game as yeah. well. Yeah. Uh, the all new of, Walking Dead game world. is also an arcadey title. You know, yeah, it's absolutely. also the same. Uh, and 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 it works for most people who own a VR headset. I think the. Of course, because the, it's it's. It, it it requires less kind of uh, how would I say it like well, is... I mean the more the more you, yeah less risk if you the more immersive you go the more likely there are that people are gonna they, complain about like yeah. oh yeah this this game is like too yeah, intense are, or like this they are happening. aiming they are aiming for instant fun without having to feel yeah. frustration but it's but it, like I think there is a small you know fix in that where you can just turn off the hot and it's fine it doesn't yeah. change the entire gameplay the core so gameplay I'm sure they can do that but they can't change the core gameplay no, no, no I'm not asking game. them to. So, look, again, one of the things that puzzled me initially, as I said, my expectations going in were I was expecting to be one of the crew members on one of the ships and then have others in. But if you think about that, think about it from a multiplayer core game design, right? What would lobbies be like? What would ships be like? How easy is it to get a game going? Yeah. Um, I think the the one thing we were debating yesterday when we we kind of had a two-hour play session, came out of it and were, like, thinking back about it, I really think that from a, from Servios's perspective, and this is the biggest probably problem that I have with their games. A lot of their games, you play them for half an hour, and you're kind of like, okay, I get it, you know. And unless it really, really just, gives just you like the... you would in an arcade, you know? yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's a question exactly. though, but like, did you ever play Furious Seas? Uh, because that's kind of like the the biggest game that we can kind of compare side by side. This with is it. a copy, carbon copy. I didn't play it. Um, okay, Doc no. had, and and it's it's quite a carbon copy. So it's not. It, I think if they took a little bit more of a page out of the book, of um, sorry, what was the two D game that I just mentioned? Um, sea, of sea of Thieves. If yeah. they took more from Sea of Thieves, I think it, for in my eyes, uh, would have done a little bit better. But again, they probably internally play tested this and found yeah. out what the masses yeah. are going to want. Uh, and 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 in the end, if you have an entire ship that needs to be controlled by players then try to have a active community driving that title because i'm not sure if everyone still remembers electronauts what happened to electronauts you know i, I don't hear any any updates on that anymore it's a very no, different kind of no, game though. Yeah, yeah but true but in in the end that also drives a online community so then, by having a, a player control one ship you don't need that many players to no, but, have but fun I mean, in the game you need maybe at, three people and then yeah, you have th- a good match I I understand that, but if you look at, for example, at the way Star Trek did it, you had one person that could control the entire ship. Exactly. But if you would play in multiplayer, you would have different roles. You have a captain that can control every aspect, but you yeah. have a, a multiplayer. Yeah, but you have with a, a, someone who steers the ship, someone exactly. who does weapons. Yeah, yeah. But in the in the end, I think the the game Servio's made so far, they have enough data to see if it's if it's a risk or not to make a massive multiplayer course, game that, with a that's, ship that's with like six people on board. I don't think that that is what Zim is disagreeing with, but I do think that there is a point made in that that there could have been more done with the multiplayer, maybe if you like that kind of immersion. But again, they're making arcade titles, so this is not what they're going yeah. for. I think, I think all... the, the issue is right now, there isn't a game like that. There isn't a game like Sea of Thieves in yeah. VR right now. So, it's but too, but I, it's, I, too, it's too ambitious, that's it, why. It is, it is. It's it is. not going to work right now. Personally, I kind of like the idea of one person controlling each ship because oh, then yeah. you feel like you're in control of the action rather than you're relying on someone else. Um, but I'm looking forward to playing it. We're planning to play it this week, me and Nathy. So uh, we'll, maybe we'll talk about it next week. But <laughs> Watch um, out for each other on the open seas is all I'll say. <laughs> yeah. But I don't think there's any friendly fire. So that's, I don't know, no. good okay. if you like the, an easy the- game. There's also a single player campaign, right? So if you're yeah. like Rowdy, you don't, you don't want to play with other people. You can play on your own and make up your own little pirate adventure on your Cam- own. The campaign isn't isn't available in the in the beta, okay. and also uh, for those looking to play the closed beta, I think it's only available for the weekend. So just uh, watch out for that. Yeah, correct. All right, we've got to be fast, Nathan. Exactly. I don't yeah. want you to plan it for Tuesday and then miss <laughs> yeah. it. Don't miss this. Okay. Poll. Okay. So let's find out what Rowdy's been up to then. What about you, dude? What's your highlight? Yeah, this week? I, I've played uh, I've played two games, and I, I don't know if I can already. We're probably going to talk a little bit about uh, Vertigo later, so I don't know yeah. if I should already mention it now. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, the the game that I've been playing is uh, Minecraft. I've actually dove back into Minecraft, uh, and this time it was uh, Chris who loaded up a, a Lord of the Rings kind of map. So we actually went uh, real real geek this time. Uh, and we just like messed around and like we visited a bunch of areas. It was uh, it was actually an awesome experience uh, to see this as well. I, I probably 
probably not going to make a video of it. I don't think it was good video material, but it was fun to just like uh, roam around and see like some maps that really made it like a scale, you know, like an impressive scale. Yeah. Uh, so, so which one was Frodo and which one was uh, his Samwise Ganji? <laughs> I, I was Gollum. <laughs> <laughs> Schmeagol. My precious. Yeah, they're just creeping around the map the entire time. <laughs> nice. 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 I like. But you also played Vertigo too, too, right? I also played Vertigo. Um, we're probably going to talk about it later anyway. But uh, yeah, I think it's hands down like the best VR game that I've played so far uh, in terms of polish, in terms of... Uh, uh, story driven forward um it's so smooth uh i still I, I still encountered a couple of bugs uh maybe i should mention them as well i had uh, a, a shotgun that wouldn't reload i just had infinite ammo that would just go like doo -doo 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 -doo. and i had the revolver that wouldn't um that wouldn't work then so the the, the revolver you get towards the end of the of the demo Same. that also wouldn't work for me and i had one more was when i i picked up the the crowbar while I had, uh, no, I picked up the, the first gun while I had the crowbar still in my hand and all of a sudden I had three hands. So okay. there's still like, you know, some, some things that can be, can be worked on, but holy moly, this, uh, I would have paid for this demo. Uh, yeah. I know the demo is freely available, but it's so good. It feels like, um, you know, like the, the original Half-Life where you go on the train mm -hmm. and you go through the environment. Um, yep. He's done, or are they, because I looked it up now, they're a team of three. Zulubu mm -hmm. Productions is a team of three. Uh, the the lead developer is, is 19, 19 years old. Uh, uh, it's it's, it's mind-blowing. It's mind-blowing how, how smooth it is. But like I was saying, they have that train ride in the beginning where they like, you know, a great sense of humor as well, like the way that they portray everything. Uh, so nicely done how you go through the environments, how you shift from, from a level to another level. Um, yeah, so, so well done. Great audio, great visuals, uh, great, great voice acting um yeah i'm very impressive so, so let's talk about it then let's talk about vertigo 2 Open because, pandora's um, box uh nikki this is going to be your highlight of the week is it or was it was it going to be something else yes no okay. no it is yeah so, so let's have a little talk about it then because um you know i think all of us played it this week yep. um, for those that don't know it's on steam right now it's a free demo um it has full index support so if you've picked up a brand new valve index you really need to try this demo out because not that it has a lot of like hand interaction stuff going on in it but just that it's very polished for a demo that's being created by a small team but shows a lot of potential right e even even when you say like the hand interaction i played it with the because I, I i should probably mention i played it with the oculus rift s mm -hmm. the integration so, that has been done from the valve because i mean he obviously he did a lot of work for the for the valve index controller since he perfected uh, the software for it uh, to do finger tracking um, or finger uh, uh, extensions, um, but the the conversion that has been done to the Oculus Rift S is is nothing but amazing. Like it's the, really good. It's, it's the best kind of Oculus Rift S interaction I've had in, in a single game yet. Just because you have like he did like the same kind of when you push a button, it's the, how the harder you push it the more it will also, it does it on the Oculus Rift S as well. And I think, of Correct. course, the three fingers go at the same time, but that's not really, because I mean, I'm not, I'm not flipping anyone off in the game anyway, so it, it's not that big of an issue. Um, but also the, the triggers, I did have one issue with, uh, with the firing mode. If I wanted to change the firing mode, I had to press the button A, and mm -hmm. I had to uh, push the thumbstick forward at the same yeah, time, yeah, the which two I had to do with, uh, with a different hand, of course, because I can't right. do that. He should that's, probably that's, switch that. That's to why I touch controller so that it's clickable. That's why I always wanted to have a controller that has a thumbstick and a touchpad because in this case it's super neat to be able to switch yeah, but, between those on the Valve Index controllers. Yeah, but you could easily do it on the Oculus because the Oculus touch controller, the thumbstick is clickable yeah. as well. So if you yeah. click that in and push it forward, you get the same kind of or thing. Or even a push hold, like Space Pirate Trainer does a mode like that for weapon selection. Yeah. And I yeah. felt like I yeah. was like, why don't you just copy the Space Pirate Trainer? But the thing I got to say about this is, right, lead developer 19, made Vertigo single-handedly, right? When he was, what, 16? And and, and <laughs> I, I, I don't understand how this isn't a team of 20 people. Mm. I really don't get it. I don't get it. And, and the other thing is, you said you pay for it. This beats so many things. An yeah. hour of content they're giving you for free that is probably the most polished <laughs> piece, most well-rounded piece of VR entertainment 
in the last year easily and it, mm. and it's an it's a it's an experience that ends so it's not like uh yeah. you know it, it, it's i mean it ends it leaves you hanging a little bit but it's like it's an experience that starts mm. and it's an experience that has an ending so it, i i kind of like that it's even as a as a, as a full-fledged kind of game this would still be for me like you know this was fun you know this, this it, is nice it's also got some Easter eggs in there, which I think we should keep a secret. Um, yeah. If yeah. you haven't seen them already, uh, there's got some really nice Easter eggs in there. So, um, you know, if you, if you own any PC VR headset, go and download it for free yeah. and check it out. Uh, but you you played it and you did a video on your channel, right, Nathy? Yeah. So for me, Vertigo, also just Vertigo, the first one, you have, you have a demo of that one uh, as well on Steam for free. So if you want to also go back and check out the first one, you can. Um, but for me, Vertigo 2 was one of the first times where I'm like, this is why I bought a Valve Index. This is what I want to play on my Valve Index. This is what I want to experience. This could be a flagship for the Valve Index. This could be a reason for me to tell someone else, hey, you want to have high-end VR? This is a game that matches up with the hardware you buy. Um, the funny thing was that I actually had to uh, like I had the thought like oh this is actually I don't need a valve index because it works well, so sign. great with the with the other controllers as well. So, yeah, they, they, yeah, they fully utilized. It must have been the Oculus pipeline for you know for the hand interaction because it it was it was gorgeous hand interaction. Yeah. And I, actually the way the thing I was thinking I was like I'm so glad I didn't buy. An, in, an index because yeah, like I, I i don't like those controllers <laughs> frankly you know if but where i've settled well, that is i don't like that's, them that's great that's great to hear because this developer knows how to make a proper vr game for yeah. every platform and that's Three rare people. you don't you don't you don't see that that much where someone else is like hey i had an amazing experience on my headset and then the others say the same thing now this is this is a, this is a piece of art i would say and for a demo, like they know how to sell this. They know what they got in their hands and they're not afraid to show it even in this long demo because this demo is like 40, 45 minutes or something. Yeah. And you could even replay it and, and, and check out some, as Mike said, some Easter eggs. Now this is very good. This is very good and this is exciting again for everyone who owns a Valve Index because we can all be honest here that there is almost nothing that has been released so far that is impressive. Mm -hmm. And if stuff like this comes out, and we have some other developers also dedicating themselves to make the best VR experience out there, yeah. then uh, this is a very good sign. It's a mm. very good sign. I totally agree. And it's funny when Rowdy kept on saying about clicking the touch controller triggers, like he, he's almost uh, thumbsticks. He's, he's almost trying to, to, <laughs> to figure all the people that want a Valve Index out there. Oh, no, uh, I, I didn't <laughs> even think about that. <laughs> uh, um, but, I, you know, the, with the index controllers, what I really enjoyed was that it's got this kind of pill shaped thumbstick. Uh, that's your, if you push and click it, that's your teleport. Uh, but also with your gun, that's how you change your firing modes. And it actually works really well having both. Uh, yeah. But it's great to hear that it works flawlessly with the touch controllers as well uh but yeah i think all of us can't uh you know recommend the demo of vertigo 2 enough yeah. just go and, and check it out it's, I, on one side this is a great sign for the vr industry on the other side it's concerning that these dudes can do a, a way better job than a lot of developers out there yeah but the, this is also like extreme raw talent though like yeah. I but again we also around that and 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 i should also not forget to mention that we're also talking about budget here like they could have gotten a very big budget to work with most developers have maybe six months to finish up a game and they would never like this has been in development for a very long time yeah it's uh, also yeah, worth noting i don't I think, think they have a big budget earlier. at all uh the um the the main developer was an intern at valve whilst they were developing the index controllers and, and i think that's why this game or the demo is so polished because you know he worked very closely with valve so he obviously knows you know some really good development tools and tricks to optimize the game but yeah it's stand out go and check it out the game is actually coming out in 2020 so we still got yeah, of wait, crazy. sadly uh but yeah a very promising start there's, um, so there's, this, two, there's just two things I wanted to say about that, Mike. Um, firstly, I think that this guy won, guy or gal, I don't know, um, won the genetic pool because the talent here is, is insane. Everything from graphic design, you, you mentioned the, the voice talent as well, Rowdy, is so well-rounded. I'm, I'm absolutely shocked at how few people are involved with this. And the second thing is, now this is a bit of a funny thing, but I'm going to recommend that Vertigo Games goes makes a deal and buys... <laughs> the IP to Zubaloo. Vertigo and Vertigo Zubaloo. 2. Zubaloo Productions. <laughs> Zubaloo Productions, yeah. exactly. Just just bring them in. Now's the time. They're it, obviously yeah. talented. Make a, make a bid. Go buy them before somebody else yeah. does. 
Yeah. And, and and I should also mention that they, they not only made Vertigo, but they also made the Moondust uh, demo as well. Yeah, oh. yeah. They, they have actually they have actually quite a few games because I went to the uh, to their website to go and check out his CV. His CV is impressive though because he mm. does everything from like graphic design to he has a part on like how he coded like atmosphere, mm -hmm. like how a computer like uh, can code atmosphere. Uh, he has a part about music design. Uh, it's nice. uh, it's nothing but amazing like what this what this mm -hmm. guy actually can do. But uh, yeah, Vertigo and Vertigo Two, uh, Spicy Tanks, Blue Shift, Directionless. So they've actually been developing like a, a quite a few. I don't know if but, all of them are VR, mm. but um, it, it, they've actually been what uh, dipping toes in quite some bits. What it comes down to is that they understand what they have in their hands in terms of hardware. Where we see so many studios that don't use the touch controllers or the Valve Index controllers to their full potential, these these fellas know what what they can do and how to use them and how to translate that into satisfying gameplay. It's it's just funny that they seem to even understand the touch controls better than many others. Uh, so I don't know. Great job. You, you make a really good point, Zim. That someone like Valve or someone else oh. should just buy them up now while they're small. Absolutely and, now. Absolutely now. This is like when you see this. This is we, this should, guy, we should pull together and buy them. I'm not even joking. I would so consider doing that because it's like the amount of genius, the amount of raw talent that you have. To, to produce a product like that, you don't see it almost anywhere. It's yeah. or not, maybe, maybe it's because he's so uh, like free that he's able to do these kind of things. That's like... the other thing. You can't just put chains on somebody. But that said, look at, I mean, Oculus was in that space not too long ago, right? And and they got bought up, funded, and have done things that they wouldn't have been able to do if they didn't go with, um, you know, evil Facebook Corp. I say that just only because some people <laughs> think Facebook is evil. Okay. okay, I may or may not be one of them. So that is Vertigo 2. Um, so the thing I want to talk about, there's two things I want to talk about this week, actually, that uh, are my highlight. The first thing I did this week uh, was I went out and bought a Vive Tracker uh, after last week's podcast. Uh, if you missed that show, it's because uh, I got super excited talking about a game called Touring Carts VR. Um, and it basically is a game that is upcoming. Uh, it's a kart racer in VR that replicates the feeling of Mario Kart VR in the arcades right now. Uh -huh. So you can use a setup with a full racing wheel, pedals uh, at your home with your Vive, Vive Pro, Pimax, or Index. And then you can use a Vive tracker on your hand to, to let go of the steering wheel, grab something from the air that is on yeah. the track, and yeah. then throw it at your opponent. And I was like, it, like, even just talking about it on the show, even though I prepped the show myself, I got <laughs> super excited talking about it on the show. So as soon as the show finished, I went and bought a Vive tracker. I only bought one because uh, you know, otherwise it was going to cost me another kidney uh, because these things are bloody expensive. It cost me 130 pounds oh, for one. <clears throat> 130 quid? Well, um, you mean brand new? Brand, and this is the thing, you need to buy these ones brand new, particularly if you bought an index. And this is important to know if you're yes. interested in buying a tracker. Huh. Uh, there's two models of the tracker. Uh, the newest one has a blue Vive logo in the middle, uh, and that is compatible with uh, Steam Base Stations 2.0. The older ones, which have a gray uh, logo in the middle, are only compatible with base stations 1.0. Uh, can so you, you show it, by the way? I don't have it. It hasn't been delivered yet. Uh, oh, OK, wait. Maybe I can find it in my. Uh... Still coming. Um, Not buying yeah. that cover story, though, Mike. I know it's for VR chat, and you just want to be a dancing anime girl, but it's OK. Yeah, I'm going to stick it on my belt and so I can gyrate. And, uh, <laughs> uh, no, I'm not going to do that. But uh, yeah. I have the old ones still, I think. You do, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I was super excited about Touring Carts VR. So if you missed last week's episode, go and check that out. It's, uh, it's going to be on Steam. It's going to be on PSVR. And they've also implemented methods on the PSVR version. So you can play with a steering wheel and one move controller to simulate the same feeling on the PSVR, which is great. Um, the second thing I want to talk about is a game called Crisis Brigade. Now, think Crisis Brigade, but with VR in front of it, and that's what this game's called. Uh, it's also available on the PC VR and PSVR. Uh, Nathie's just showing us the Vive tracker on webcam uh, now. So he's this got is the, the old one, right? Older version with the gray Vive logo. The newer version has the blue Vive logo, so just be aware of that. Um, but yeah, uh, Crisis Brigade, um, like I say, it's, it's on PC VR and PSVR headsets right now. Uh, but recently, the developers called Sumo Lab. Uh, added the game to SideQuest as, sadly, the game didn't get uh, approval to be on the Oculus Quest store. Mm. Um, so I was kind of intrigued by this one. I played it, and I just thought it was a really fun little game. Like, it's super arcadey. It feels a bit like 
time crisis uh, in that it's very quick, uh, it's fun, and, and it's super challenging as well. Um, you have like three lives. If you get shot three times, it's game over. You have to start the level right from the beginning again. So it encourages you to get better and better oh. and keep playing and playing. Um, the first level is like a, a terrorist incident at a bank where they're going to blow it up and just like the best uh, 80s action movies out there yeah. you play the role of like a solo cop going in to save the day just with his like little pistol solo cop you say okay solo cop yeah um and the shooting <laughs> and reloading mechanics are just really fun and satisfying you know you have to reload the gun each time sometimes if you haven't got one in the chamber you have to wreck the slide back again um, and you have to actually use cover, like physical cover. So, you know, you're constantly having to move around a wall or you're having to duck down behind your like squad car. And the thing is like, I was so like laser focused into this game and having so much fun. I didn't actually realize that I had done like a thousand squats <laughs> in this game <laughs> because the next day the I couldn't actually walk. Wow. <laughs> I was so like, it sounds like, like a, a, a game that makes good out of like good use out of your room skill environment. Like it's perfect game for the quest because you're you're moving around so much you can like really sort of move around your play space yeah and i just had so much fun i was sweating buckets by the end of it <laughs> finally completed the first mission i was super relieved um but it just kind of made me realize that you know we've talked about this before of course but we're missing a few little gems because of this curated process and we've talked about again why there's pros and cons of this curated process but apparently according to the developers i don't know how they know this but oculus didn't even play this game apparently um the quest version i don't know how they know that but apparently that's what they're saying mm. so I, I would just say like you know i would urge oculus just to give this one a second look uh because i think this one is a lot of fun and there's nothing else like it on the quest store right now in terms of like arcade cover shooter mm. yeah so and, and right now, looking at the store of the quest, people are dying to play something new. So by curating it so heavily, uh, there is barely anything getting through this great firewall at the moment. Yeah, yeah. But if you know, if you want to play the game for free, it's on SideQuest right now. Uh, it's completely legit, you know, supported by the developers. If you enjoy it, they just urge you to go and buy like the Rift version of the game and leave a nice <coughs> review on the Rift version saying you played it on Quest, and that will get Oculus's attention, fingers crossed. Say the name again? Uh, Crisis Brigade. Uh, it's available on PSVR, PC, and obviously on SideQuest. Brigade. Is, is that a um, <clears throat> is that a spinoff of a uh, a previous PC game? Like I don't know, uh, Crisis. There was a PlayStation game called Crisis something Time Cop or. No, no, it's it's crisis. assets. I, I do think it's assets remind you of other games you played, but that's yeah. about it. Is it I, I made a comment in my video that it kind of <laughs> like it's like Roblox has all of a sudden got violent. But <laughs> graphics aside, like it, it's it's great fun to play, and that's the key yeah. part of it here. It sounds good. Um, I'm glad you've not I'm, not. I'm glad you've not fallen down your staircase yet. <laughs> yeah, doing a, little, doing a little Max Payne style dive. Yeah, exactly. Um, if you so do is, it, have a camera on the staircase, please, Mike. Exactly. Plus, exactly. if if this if this game he's playing ha has a basement, he could just jump down and it still makes sense. Still carry on. Exactly. I think I was gonna say uh, really to Oculus, get, having seen like two Oculus Connects, something that they they do really well sometimes is to do like a sizzle reel of indie games. It would be so cool if Oculus Connect comes around, and because we haven't heard much, you know, back from developers, let's say, let's say they've got a few games, a few good choice indie games in the holding tank going through the QA process at the moment, ready to launch. They sizzle reel it at OC6. I think you'll get a cheer from the crowd if you do that with a couple of select yeah. games. I'd love to see this one in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, go and try it this week, Zim. I'd love to know your thoughts on it. Um, but let's jump into some quick news then. And first up is uh, some great news if you're an Oculus Rift S owner. Because one of the biggest complaints around about this headset is you know, the audio for one. Uh, you know, we all know that the audio kind of sucks on this headset, which is a shame. Uh, but the other big issue is that every now and again, while you're playing with the headset, you'll see a, like a static white flash. Uh, in yeah. there. So this isn't captured in any recordings when you record gameplay using OBS. It can only be seen in the headset itself. And this has been an issue since day one of the Rift S launch. And it even caused some people out there to return their headsets because they were like, Oh, this kind of sucks. I'm just going to go back to my CV1. Yep. Um, but it's great that Oculus have finally addressed the issue and posted a response on the official Oculus oh. forums this week. And they've stated that a firmware update to fix this exact issue is coming soon. 
Now, oh, 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 coming. I, I want a moment. <laughs> of that, but like, hey, now it's out, but coming soon. Yeah, okay. they said. They said sadly, it won't be included in the next uh, public test channel release. Yeah. Uh, but it's going to be imminent. So, These poor it, consumers. Yeah, you know, if you're a Rift S owner, I would highly recommend, by the way, to be on the public test channel version of Oculus Home because uh, you'll get these updates first. And the most recent update on the public test channel from Oculus uh, added improvements to the Rift S tracking. Uh, so it's, wor it's worthwhile being on the public test channel. If you're not sure how to enable it, just go into your Oculus dashboard on your desktop, go in the settings and beta, and then just check the little toggle that says public test channel and you'll be on it. Um, so yeah, but did you guys, you guys notice this static flash? Well, in the headset? Pretty much every yeah. night I'm streaming with it, yeah. It, it's like, a, I, would, I would describe it as a, um, a static, mostly white, but gray speckled uh, noise frame. It is colored as well. It's colored pixels, noise frame that just gets inserted. I probably see it once in 20 minutes. Oh, so often I see it less than that though, I think. I don't, I don't think I see it that often mm. or forget about it. Yeah, I, I see it like every few hours. Uh, it's not a deal breaker for me. It's just an annoyance. Uh, I, no. I can understand why the community are upset about it, uh, but it's great. It's that only a, a fraction of a second, right? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, okay. it, yeah, it is. It's only a single frame for me. So like, I yeah. the fact that some people have kicked their Rift S's back, I would hope that they had other reasons as well, because it yeah. seems quite minor to kick it back just for that. Now, if you couple that with the audio crackle, Okay, fair enough. It seems a little bit janky. So, but yeah. it's a software fixable problem. Great. I'm glad they've acknowledged it. That's one problem acknowledged. Let's hope they now <laughs> acknowledge the audio issue we talked about before. Oh, which, that's yeah. on the Quest, though, right? Uh, the, that was the audio yeah. On the Quest. But I, I mean, yeah. I don't know if if it's a shared software ecosystem or something that's driving this. I don't think they're related, but um, it just feels no. like no. they're related. Uh, yeah, for me, like the audio, the only way I got around it was uh, by using the PSVR Bionic Mantis. Uh, ear earphones, which are kind of clip-on ones. I'll just show you that quickly on the webcam, so you can see it if you've never seen them before. Yeah. Uh, they, they 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 come in white originally, but I painted them black. Um, it's a bit of an ugly uh, sort of cable mess, uh, but it sounds way better than the stock solution. Yeah. And then for a microphone, I use a wireless mod mic. Um, yeah. Hopefully, uh, hopefully they sell a sell a new version with headphones on there because it's kind of sad to see a mic and others, you know, put their own headphones on them. Well, yeah. You know. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. Um, but yeah, so that is uh, some quick Rift S news. Okay. Wait, wait. That's just on Nathie's point. So that's that's available now. You can buy for forty nine pounds or whatever the additional earbuds, but mm. it doesn't circumvent the audio crackle. The audio crackle is affected in the ports because if I put on aftermarket it, headphones, it ejects. Doesn't it affects the jacks? Are you talking uh, about Rift S? Uh, no. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Yeah, you're talking about Quest. Yeah, I'm talking but, yeah. about Quest. But for Thank Rift you. S, you know, I, I would I would totally recommend a permanent solution stuck to your headset. Mm. So, um, so let's get into some game sales then, because if you missed out on the Steam VR summer sale and the Oculus summer sale, you might be happy to hear that Humble Bundle are currently offering some great discounts on some awesome VR games. Now these will be Steam VR keys, just so you're aware. And here are some of our highlights of the sale so first up space junkies get this five pounds 94 pence amazing deal yeah uh which equates to 6.99 in us dollars i think this is great this, this is like the, this is like the price it should have been well not should have been from the beginning uh, it should have been more but it should have been cheaper because you got to note that this game launched at like 40 dollars. yeah but it still means that they still need more players so they go down and down and down because it seems yeah. like they still need more players but but it deserves more players oh yeah it does That's, it does this game it does. is a triple a game um by its design feeling and and gameplay mm -hmm. uh it's a solid quick paced arcade shooter yeah. i know we've mentioned it on the show before um it, it's it's way better than the recently released uh telefrag uh vr so if you're considering telefrag or this game like this mm -hmm. is a no-brainer go for space junkies um, and at this reduced price, it's a bargain. So hopefully there'll be an influx of uh, new players yeah. and you can hopefully have some fun with this one. Uh, the next one on the list is Killing Floor Incursion. Uh, this is £9.99 or $9.99 oh. US dollars. Awesome game. Um, highly recommend playing this one. Co-op. Co yeah. yeah. 
me and Nathie played this one co-op. We had so much fun with this one. It's super creepy and gets really intense, yeah. but it's got some really satisfying gameplay mechanics in there, especially co-op. Amazing. Uh, next one on the list is Skyrim VR. <laughs> like, you could play this game for an eternity, and this is £13.19 pence or 19.79 in US dollars. Again, there's just so much content for that price. If if that sort of setting and fantasy world is your bag. But is is that with all the DLCs then or is that only the core mm. game? Does the core VR game include the DLCs or do you have to buy that separately? It includes. Yeah, includes when they did the VR when they did the VR game ah, all that okay. the extra yeah. islands and everything and the, Mirak. If you ever the, get if you ever get to Mirak and get his staff, do not oh, drop yeah. it. It is awesome. You get these black <laughs> horrible tentacles that come up. I murdered entire villages with this wow. thing. I, I love it when I love it when people get excited about games that I literally have no interest in playing whatsoever. You, but it's great. But Mike, the possibilities in this game are endless. You can get stuck on a mountain with your horse and then walk all the way back to a village to save your game again. The, the reason I love it, right? And it's a reason why I know Rowdy um, is now getting into Minecraft, right? The ability to wander <laughs> and the ability to wander literally for like two hours in a direction. You could literally probably walk for a lot longer than that, by the way. Find a cave go down that cave, have that cave be longer than the vast majority of VR games, and have mm. interactions down there that feel like it was a at least double A, you know, VR game like designed just for that purpose. It's an amazing game. And that's not even talking about the mod scene if you buy it on PC. <laughs> so there you go. Zim's recommendation. Just go and, just go and buy this game. Uh, next one is I Expect You to Die. £13.29. Uh, uh, 1749 in US dollars. They've literally just added some free DLC to the game, uh, which is a level called Seat of Power. I played that this week, thought it was uh, short, but sweet. I thought it was a fun little level. Um, loads of fun content in there if you sort of like uh, escape room sort of games. Uh, next one is Fisherman's Tale. Solid puzzle game in VR. Really, really clever puzzle design. Nine pounds and nine pence in British pounds. Uh, 979 in US dollars. Mm. And the final one on my list is Doom VFR, six pounds fifty nine in British pounds, nine eighty nine in US dollars. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. It's only an okay. additional one that I want to mention, Mike, because it's so low and it's very easy to bypass. Um, I like Tim Schafer's games, and so uh, games like games like. Um, uh, Day of the Tentacle, and um, there's a whole bunch of other things that have happened. Actually, I don't think Day of the Tentacle was him, but there's there's loads of Schaefer games, and he's he's a legend in the industry. They Grim made Fandango. A, Grim Fandango, thanks. Um, they actually made a, um, a a series called Psychonauts a while back. Very, it had cult following, big on PC, and then they did a custom VR game for, and it didn't get a huge mm. accolade in the community at the time. But I have to say, for what it is, it's a couple hours, probably three. If I remember correctly, Psychonauts and the Rhombus of Ruin for two pounds thirty-two is a total steal. It's really, really, it's a good game. It was a buy recommendation for me about two years ago. Um, a humble bundle is great for like buying stuff at like budget prices. Don't pass yeah. that one up if you're on PC VR. It's good. Yeah, and also you're buying in a legit way where the developers actually make some some money too. You know, compared yeah. to. Yeah, and that's only a handful of games. There's so many more yeah. uh, VR games on sale at HumbleBundle.com. Uh, we've added a link in the description down below if you want to go check it out. Wow. So next up, this is an interesting one. Uh, I've been interested about talking uh, about this one with you guys. Uh, it's T for God on Oculus Quest. Zim mentioned this in releases last week, and it got me super excited, a bit like the touring carts thing. A lot of things we talk about on the show get me really excited. I end up doing them the week after. So hopefully you guys out there and girls that are listening, you have the same thing, kind of spurs you to go and try something new. Um, but I was really impressed with this. So T for God, God a super weird name for a game. <laughs> Don't let that put you off, though, uh, because you should go and check it out. Uh, it's free to check out on Oculus Quest as it's a side quest title, so you need to go through that installation procedure. You did it this week, Zim. How was it for you? This no, I wish uh, I wish I could. Um, unfortunately, I've got a neck problem preventing me from doing quest shows at the moment because the quest okay. is just that little bit heavy. Okay. Irritates my neck, and uh, so I'm holding off at the moment. For between that and the VR brigade, uh, yeah. brigade. Yeah, uh, those two I, titles are amazing. Oh, I can't yeah. like I am. I'm sitting here just crying constantly when Sorry. I'm not on the show. Sorry. Yeah. So, okay, so go. it's free on Quest through SideQuest, and it's on PC VR headsets uh, on itch.io. So you can download the game on itch.io and play it on any PC VR headset. 
The interesting thing about this game is that it measures your play space. Uh, so after you've set up your room, it, it knows the uh, the measurements of your play space and adapts the game accordingly. So that's the sort of magic about this. So in most VR games, you can use a thumbstick or a touchpad to move around or swing your arms like in Gorn. In this game, you actually have to walk around your environment, your physical environment. And it uses non Ecludian spaces to create a unique move movement system that's procedurally generated. It's super hard to describe, but I'll try my best. But just imagine in your mind like an Escher painting, and that's kind of what these developers have created in VR. Like, it's just magic. Um, so as the game knows your play space, it generates and scales the game world around that play space. So you, each play space will be unique, and each world will be unique that it creates for that play space. So if you're playing in a, in a warehouse or you're playing in a tiny little room, it doesn't really matter. It will create a maze type environment that you can physically walk around your play space without ever bumping into your walls. And when I played it, I was super surprised. I never bumped into a wall, never fell off my staircase. Uh, I was super safe. <laughs> and Guardian on or off while you did that? I had it on, yeah. uh, but I never touched the walls. Um, mm. I, you could turn it off and you would be safe. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it, though. Um, but it gives you the feeling of navigating through like an industrial maze when in real life you're just kind of doing circles or figures of eight around your play mm. space. Yeah, oh, like that. Yeah. This, is, this is what the Oculus Quest does best. And that's what we got to experience with Superhot with this early demo at Oculus Connect. If yes. they did the same with what they did now, it would have yes. been amazing. Because honestly, most VR titles you played with your Oculus Quest are standing experiences. Because in the end, you don't have to move physically to get somewhere. You can always, as you said, swing your arms or use your thumbstick or do something else. So this one is forcing you to make use out of that play space. And I think that's what Quest does best. Absolutely, because you're wireless, uh, I would advocate playing it on Quest over PC VR. Uh, but this really reminded me of the Star Wars Void experience and yeah. the Arizona Sunshine location-based experience because yeah. they used similar techniques and tricks in those location-based experiences to pull off the feeling of being in a bigger play space when in fact you're in a, a little cube, basically. Um, so yeah, I would definitely urge you to go check it out. It is kind of hard to explain, but basically because you're walking around your play space and you're not having to use thumbsticks or teleportation, it makes you feel way way more connected to the experience and it makes it more immersive and way more fun as well. I can't wait to play. I can't wait to play it. Um what would you what would you be your comment about the difficulty for getting into cuz if if someone hasn't gotten to side loading. Um yeah. you know using side quest and all that that that's required how how much of a challenge is that today is it it's so easy now with side quest and i know i know that you know nathy in particular isn't a big advocate of doing this sort of thing um that's that's fine you know uh i understand why because you do have to sign up as a developer you know you're, yeah, that's you're, the only thing you're you're, you're, yeah. you're agreeing uh, to terms and conditions so you need to be aware of that mm. um but SideQuest is very, very easy. It's easier now than it ever has been with Go or, or Quest. So uh, there is really no excuse unless you're worried about this sort of terms and conditions thing. You should go check it out because uh, you're missing out. Like this is the thing. This week, uh, I only played sideloaded content on my Quest. Uh, that was uh, Crisis Brigade, uh, T for God, and the Force Tube uh, demo using the Force Tube with the Quest, which also worked great, by the way. And, and do you think that the game in itself, beyond like being novel, uh, stood in its own as well? Good question. It's a great question. Uh, I think the community really hyped this uh, because of the movement system. The core gameplay mechanics, you're shooting uh, robots um, and you're moving around to get to an end, mm -hmm. an ending. Mm -hmm. uh, the hands look great. The little robot hands kind of remind me of Stormland hands, a bit like watered down for the quest. Um, but yeah, it's kind of a bit meh, you know, the gameplay is a bit meh, but the concept and the way they've yeah. implemented this movement system is... Yeah, it shows completely potential. Completely what I, unique. What I really and want I, with this, what I really want with this, um, hearing that feedback, is a game like, remember we covered this title, uh, I don't know if you guys are going to remember it, but with Loneliness, which was like a roguelike, you're a, you're a, a disheveled robot that's been ejected from the system and you're trying to climb your way back, almost like a climby type experience. But as I mentioned, kind of roguelike and in the similar graphical style as T for God. And I just think that if you applied that you you know non Euclidean movement 
mechanism with this and had it scale well to large and larger environments, um, I think that that would be really exciting as an experience to play in a field outdoors, in a rec center that you, you know, yeah. hire for a half an hour or an hour or something. Um, that would be really awesome, I thought. And yeah. for arcades too, you know, location-based yeah. places are totally interested in these kind of things where it's actually adapting to what you have because it mm -hmm. saves up a lot of development costs as well. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I just hope that, you know, this is why I wanted to mention it on the show again, because I hope developers out there, uh, I know a few developers listen to the show that they could check it out and, and maybe, you know, uh, read their blog, because they do a series of blogs on their website, which is voidroom.com, and they actually explain how they do all this, like procedurally generated occludian, non-occludian uh, spaces. Uh, so yeah. it's super interesting from a developer's so, point of view. So it sounds like this one could be a potential title on the official store as well, but right now it's still kind of in its early, or is it because in this I, case, I, I, Oculus wants to kind of push the standing. Like I, I, I haven't yeah. seen any game on the, on the official store that makes use out of a physical space. I think they don't want to go there. The only game that's on the Oculus store that makes use of your play space and scales to that play space is Bogo. Bogo. Uh, um, and, and also National Geographic in a way as well. It's also okay. forcing you to, but not, not in the way you're describing it here. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I have a concern that because of the movement, that, that it might not get there. But fingers crossed, I super, I really do hope so. I really do hope so. Yeah. But, but uh, even it's, funny, now, it's funny that Mike is playing a lot on, on this side quest tour. If, if, if this keeps rolling, if this keeps you know going on, it will compete with the official store. Like, if, I, if I, they, I don't if see that as already, a bad thing, though. I don't no, see that it's, it's, it's no, 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 no. That's something that that just grew by itself. That's yeah. But uh, this this kind of is like something that we've asked for before when we said like, oh, it would be nice if we would oh, have yeah. like a yeah, curated yeah. store, and like a store like you know for mm. other yeah. non curated stuff. The only thing I would wish is that there is a payment method uh, done so we can give the developers mm. the, the funds that they deserve to maybe fund the next isn't there isn't there like because i know that itch.io works with that uh, that kind of way as well that you have like uh, for example like a patreon system that you right. can, for yeah. example get yeah. like a but a key yeah. through there to to download it from the other store yeah, yeah. no i think that would be a great solution but i don't think oculus would be amused because then it makes its own revenue and that's what i i don't think they want that stuff whether they like it or not like no, no they, they create, like i totally agree guys like they yeah. created this themselves yeah so now it's well, up no, to no, them no. To... I, I don't i don't i don't mean a negative i i do think that the curated store experience is still the way forward for the oculus quest oh yeah but uh, like like mike said there needs to be a way to to for the developers to reward them for their efforts if they don't go for the oculus store mm -hmm. um but yeah. you cannot expect from oculus to be no, delivering no. response but if there's another way of doing that through patreon or Oh, yeah. whatever donating or then yeah. that's a good yeah, that, that, that's true yeah, i'm that's surprised true. there isn't a donate link on that site it, they, it should be the yeah, developer uh, should really yeah if, if they're not averse to it because some developers are like they believe in a pay it forward internet where it's i'll take the free app that you developed and i'll make one and you take mine yeah. but i do think yeah. that to support yourselves get some coffees or whatever in yeah Throw a yeah. donate link up because yeah. you deserve it for you know exploring VR in this way. This yeah. development is yeah. really critical, and you're showing how no, it's done. So. so thank you so. for uh, making making this possible. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, there is like this one comment from Nimzo. He says, in the end, no consumer should ever be signed up as a developer to get games, and that's a bad process. And I totally agree. In the end, it should be easier for consumers to play these titles that don't make it on the store. Yeah. So there should be a legalized process in between yeah. that makes this happen. That's that's all I'm saying. Like I totally yeah. support that, this open VR good. thing. No, that, and that's, that's the, not going to happen. Well, the, and I don't, I don't that's that the that problem. And that yeah. Oculus is going to say like we're going to no, make no, uh, no. Uh, no, I don't uh, think so either, because that would open up yeah. everyone to just make something again themselves without having to go through green light. Okay, next topic. But yeah, exactly. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. It's just it's just like one of these topics that yeah. I'm super know, super know, interested in because it's so important for the industry what's it, going on it, at this it, moment. It, no, listen, you need <laughs> it's so funny, like this show already we've been like so like triggered, like no Yeah, yeah. But that's great. That's Fix great. We, I, I love that we all have different opinions on stuff. Uh, it would be super boring if we had the same exactly. opinion. 
and hopefully you guys in the chat uh, and those that are watching in big screen are all having your own little debates oh, about yeah. this as well because i would love that that yeah. we're sparking conversation and again, uh, we are you. united on one thing and that is we all support an open vr platform that every developer can make something and everyone can check it out yeah and i got a highlight of comment someone just a dj gaming said bro i'm just bored i want more quest yeah. content that's exactly what we're talking yeah. about side quest is like this open <laughs> hole that, that allows developers to feed you yeah. regularly yeah. So that is uh, Teeth for God. Go and check it out just for the movement and the non-Euclidean uh, spaces. Very interesting concept. Final bit of quick news this week is that if you're a fan of Minecraft, like Rowdy and Zim, then you'll probably be really happy and you'll probably want uh, Minecraft wow. the Quest, right? You guys want Minecraft on Quest? No. Yes. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, nah. I, what I want is never going to happen. I'm never probably going to get Vivecraft on the quest, unfortunately, no. because of how it builds. But, no. you know, okay, can we have the, uh. what do they call it, Bedrock version? The, the <laughs> Carmack-coded uh, version of Minecraft for quest? I don't see why not. Yes. You know? um, and this is the thing. You'll be happy to hear that there's a lot of other people out there that also want Minecraft on the Quest, and they're trying to make it happen. So there is actually an online petition right now that you can sign uh, that's part of the Minecraft uh, feedback community. Um, so the thing is, you know, it, it, it would just work so well on Quest. You know, mm -hmm. take it on the go with you, play it in other various rooms within your home, completely wireless. It's strange that it hasn't been out on Quest already. Um, but even on Rift, right? Officially, in a way where it's like Vivecraft, where you can use your hands and really physically play Minecraft. Not not the cinema one, where you're into this screen and you play with your controller, right? Yeah, like Zim's the expert when it comes to playing Minecraft on on PC VR headsets, but Vivecraft <laughs> is is the is what you use, right? It's the bee's knees for multiplayer. Um, that's not to say that the Bedrock version is bad, especially if you're going to play it by yourself. It's a gr they like they have some really nice features. Like if you're not feeling too well, because um, Minecraft is one of those things where you're gliding across a plane and some people can't hack it, you can just very quickly slide from that out into a virtualized couch environment where you're looking at Minecraft on a TV, and then when you feel better, slide right back in. So they, there's mm -hmm. some really awesome features for people who, if you didn't know about it, that feature that 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 game set that branch of the game is great. And I would definitely recommend trying it, even if you cool. are like me and prefer Vivecraft. So, so if you want it on Quest, uh, like I said, there is a petition over on the Minecraft feedback community, and the Quest community, like you know, uh, the, the subreddit and everyone else, they've kind of rallied around this one, and it's currently the second highest, most popular request over at the Minecraft feedback community with yeah. over 2,000 <laughs> votes. Um, people did do this. Uh, they petitioned for a, an Oculus Go version when the Go came out. Mm -hmm. uh, again, it, it ranked super high on their feedback uh, sort of list, but sadly it never came to fruition. Mm -hmm. uh, but with a Quest, wow. it does make more sense that it would be released on Quest. Oculus right? also supposed like they were working with Microsoft back in the days to ship, you know, the Rift. So it, I don't know, maybe there's still some spark of light there that they can, you know, use to make it happen. Yeah, no, I, I really hope so. Uh, if you're interested in Minecraft on the Quest, we've put a link to the petition in the description down below. Mm -hmm. Go over there, hit the upvote, leave a comment yeah. if you want to, and hopefully yeah. this will get enough uh, sort of momentum behind it that the, the developers sort of have to pay, make no yeah. you know, pay notice to it and, and hopefully implement a Quest version. Mm -hmm. And if not, we just go to their office with our uh, big X's and torches and... We will we'll riot. Yeah. <laughs> now, Grab now, the chicken axe. Given we're talking about arms le arms length like Minecraft, where we're like clawing at the air going, please, can I just, please, can't I just, I'm going to sign a petition, which I'm probably not going to do anything, but please. Um, th there is something else that is in that space at the moment as well. I won't go into much depth because I know we're already running a bit over <laughs> our normal schedule as usual. Mm. Um, but Minecraft Earth this augmented reality experience is now in closed beta and it's 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 out there some people have access to it zim sadly does not have access to it zim would like access to it and several people in chat have torches already raised 
Uh, get your pitchforks ready. We're gonna go. So, so wait, wait. Are, are you using this podcast to try and like get access to it? No. <laughs> he just did. Work. He just did. It, That's it, not gonna work. It's all about your location, right? Because I think it's only yeah. been activated in Seattle yeah. and London. I wonder if I'm close enough to London to activate it. Mike, if you get it, I'm coming down there. No, seriously, if you get oh. like, I'm I'm really curious because I did try. Remember, you egged me on the other uh, the other day about this whole. Um, uh, the Harry Potter AR app, yeah. and I installed it. I set up my account. It took me like 40 minutes to get ready. I was ready to go. And then a couple of days went by. It kept pinging me about like Wogglesworth or something. I don't know what. It was just keep pinging me these notifications. <laughs> I, I wish I'd never said yes. And then I fucking deleted it. I'm like, I, I have a good tolerance, but if you're going to keep pinging me stuff with that kind of language used, you know, I'm, I'm not taking that. That's what, was it, what did Rowdy call them that time? Woozles? <laughs> Woozles, yeah, 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 yeah. Muggles. <laughs> oh my god. Anyway. So yeah, that is uh, Minecraft. If you want it on the quest, check the link in the description. Let's yes. hand it over to Zim now for the releases for next week. So many releases, so uh, loads yes. to be excited about. Yes. Um, Go for it, dude. We have, we have plenty coming. Um, I will give you a quick run through. There are five apps that I'm covering today. I usually select three, but I can't cut any of these out. They all need to be talked about. I'll keep, I'll keep it brief. And most of you know about some of these. They're re-releases on different platforms. Uh, the first one is Racket NX, which is a game that I loved. Being a, being a serious tennis player, um, this is the closest thing uh, to that. And it's actually a kind of a funny marriage between like racquetball with that like little blue ball and um, and and like breakout. Um, so your ball, like you hit it with your racket, it sticks to the wall, it kind of slides along the wall, uh, gathering points and hitting targets and then pops off the wall, it comes back to you. Or you can track your beam it with your racket, which is kind of a weird effect. But the coolest thing about this is that it's multiplayer. It's like you can play with other people and and you get a bloody workout with this thing. Like it really feels like you're in a racquetball court, except for it's 360, which is very cool. Um, sometimes it's it's hard to play or get used to, but once you kind of get it and you get the spin and all this kind of stuff down, it's it's like the music and the visuals and the graphics. It's just it's a really yeah, satisfying yeah. title. I heard um, Anthony from VR365 saying that it was one of the best games he played in terms of like audio. That the spatial audio is like, oh, you know, it's very solid. Level. Yeah, it's very solid. I mean, that's that's one of the things that when we were talking about the Vertigo 2 demo really impressed me. Not many mm -hmm. people do spatial audio very well. This is one of those apps. And the mm -hmm. fact that it's now on Quest, the cableless headset, um, is really awesome. And it's for 15 quid U uh, UK uh, pounds. And um, that's that's just released. So it's actually out since the 18th. And also the, the way that they really like when you hit the ball, like the feeling you get, you really get that hit feeling. I mm -hmm. like that when it just just, does that. just don't confuse yourself with the other record game. That's all I'm saying. Don't buy the wrong one. Yeah, and I've got to go for their tagline. Their tagline is is a little disturbing. It says, Racket NX is a new kind of game that challenges the limits of what you can do with your balls in VR. But these are no ordinary balls. <laughs> Love that tagline. So I had to call that one out. <laughs> All right. <laughs> on, to, on to the next one before Mike turns red and explodes. Uh -oh. Okay. So uh, the next one, which is a game that I think you guys have played, and I haven't, which is for shame. But now I will, because it's coming uh, to the Oculus Go which is Paper Valley, not one oh. I expected. So Paper Valley, yeah. you, um, you you fly paper airplanes through targets, and you have the ability that when your, your paper airplane is mid-flight, you can steer it, like you have force powers. That's basically it, that's the game. And it's it's coming for four pounds, which it's is like, I think is a great deal for a game that um, looks and seems to be designed quite well. Simple, kind of mesmerizing. It's not an action FPS, but it's something that I think I'm gonna enjoy playing. What did you guys think about it when you played it on other platforms? Yeah, it's great. Paper plane parkouring, basically. So this game came out on the PC platform. Did it also come to the Quest? I don't think so, right? Not really? yet, no. So they went for Go first because obviously that's what they were working on for a while. Yeah. So, uh, okay, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a fun, uh, relaxing uh, title. Yeah, I think it's a bit like Fuji. Not that I've played Fuji, but from your guys' feedback of it, it's kind of one of those... <laughs> Um, I don't even really say anything anymore. It's you just like tell they me. played it, so you just give me my. Said it was good. Yeah, I trust you guys. Sorry. <laughs> so, yeah, it's kind of one of those chilled out games. You want to yeah, no, totally. chill out and relax. I did. Yeah, I did complete it. It does get more challenging actually later on, but uh, yeah, it's, it's just addicting. like a yeah, it's addicting. How yeah. many hours did you say it was in it? Oh, like you could pretty can complete it in like an hour, I think. 
Okay. Uh, it's not particularly long. But if but it's if it's a well designed title, like the other one that I would I really like on Go, and again for our listeners who have a Go, I might be using a Go for instance. Um, it, Land's End is another one. It's like a pretty simple puzzle game. It's it, mm-hmm. like connect dots, but it's all like head based movement. And you might think, oh, that's not good. It's kind of like um, the original Windlands in terms of its Zen quality. So that's another one to check out if you're into that yeah. kind of Zen slash, slash puzzly gameplay that isn't really hard, but is a really nice play. Okay, game three out of five. This one, ah, uh, oh, I love this news. This is great news. This is fantastic news. This <sighs> reminds me, uh, uh, this is for the audio uh, listeners now. Do you ever remember being in like a smoky rave, right? There's lasers around, you know, the shady dudes in the corner handing out, you know, unbranded pills for cash. Welcome yeah. to my childhood. <laughs> <laughs> are you are you that slightly tattooed gentleman who's sitting in the corner with your face illuminated by a Game Boy? Uh, Because you're playing Tetris. (laughs) (laughs) Then then you're going to be glad that now we've got a resolution and frame rate unlocked version of Tetris Effect coming for PC VR uh, for a good price of $31.99. You can get it for about five pounds off um, right now if you pre order it. Um, And that's out, as I said, so you'll be able to play it with your your Vive, your Index, your Rift. Um, And I got to say, out of games that I've played that are classic titles classic ip this is the one that surprised me the most i have never played a game that felt more transformed i think than tetris if you saw angry birds and you're like okay tetris vr or sorry angry birds vr is exactly as i imagined it would be tetris effect the vr version of it because you can't play it in 2d is absolutely beautiful for anyone who likes sound music as i mentioned raves if you're a, if you're a, if you're that kind of person, absolutely play this game. It's 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 a fantastic experience. I'm kind of glad I waited after the PSVR release because having it come to uh, to PC is is absolutely tantalizing. But I'll tell you, this is one time where I am super jealous of you gentlemen with the index because playing this at 144 hertz with VSync off, you're going to get extra <laughs> pixels that aren't even capable for other PC players. So um, I am you're jealous. Just- I am orgasmic. Another game, just while you're on that subject as well, that was recommended this week to try. I downloaded it again, but I haven't tried it yet. Is Thumper at 144 hertz is supposed to be like <sighs> oh, oh my day. Eye melting experience. Oh my yeah. god. Also, that's a great idea. regarding Tetris, uh, I think Tetris is by now like one of the games that has been like modified the most out of all of them. Like how many versions of Tetris are there by now? Yeah. That must be like sixty or seventy, I guess. Yeah. Uh, it's- uh, it's just one to add to the list again. It's, it's good to note that Tetris Effect has one feature that a regular Tetris game doesn't have. Uh, I've kind of forgot about what it exactly does, but you can wipe out the entire board in one shot and just score uh, like some kind of high score. I don't know how that worked again. It's been a while I played it on the PlayStation yeah, VR, but there is something that you, there's a meter that you can fill up with energy and then suddenly all shoot it away and, and get like this, this satisfying like moment of just, you know, wiping everything clean. Yeah. But, but this is coming to the Epic Store next week, right? Oh, yeah, the, oh, <laughs> the, the giant steaming pile of... Um, I missed this point. So, yes, it's an Epic Game Store exclusive, which, to me, makes me feel sick inside. But so, for those so of next- you who have installed the Epic Game Store, I haven't. I've been holding off. Please let me know how this works out for you. And, and tell me if you had to sell your soul at the door, because I think you'll have to. Uh, well, yeah. You can you can say whatever you want, but the more titles get added here, uh, yeah. the more interesting it becomes, because it also has Falcon Age. Falcon and, Age. And, and, and we have been speaking about this for so many episodes that Epic Games is slowly an upcoming VR platform, and they are they are going to, hopefully, I think it would be good for the industry to, you know, um, compete yeah, I do, with I the other ones. That. I don't see it as a bad thing at all. No, I no. think um, Epic Games they they make really good games. So the, the, why couldn't they like make like a great store as well? The, the and, great uh, thing so is, far, the, yeah, go ahead. Is that the, these games have predominantly been PSVR exclusives, yeah. and they're coming over to PC through the Epic Games Store. And if that's going to keep going, 
like I'd be super happy for like Astrobot, although it's unlikely because it's a Sony game. But like, do you know what I mean? Like more or Resident Evil games or anything coming yeah. through. Uh, the oh Epic my. Store. If it acts There's as a gateway, I'm with you. The thing I don't like, and don't don't get it wrong, I've not tried it, so I'm not dissing the, the platform. The thing I don't like is when, like, it was like Battle.net and Blizzard. They're like, we're going to keep our own platform away from Steam. Uh, yeah, yeah. And then everybody, Ubisoft and everybody else, has, like, started kicking off their own platforms. Having to have, like, six different platforms installed on my PC but, is just a pain. That's, all. that's, that's already... That's already gonna happen. That's I know. We already have that with the Oculus Store and the it's Steam Store. Exactly. Like, there's gonna be other other. You have Viveport as well. Yeah. There's, the, you have Itchio. You have even there's already so if, many stores. If, there's if, no if way a, around that. Really, if, if a store, if a platform becomes really solid, you're just accepting it. That's the way it goes. It's the same yeah. with the Oculus Store. You had to maybe at the start learn to like it, but now it's a part of your your daily routine. It's the same for me with Origin. I don't I don't oh. mind uh, using Origin because I have yeah. some very good games on there. So. Maybe see it as, a, as like, because it, it depends a lot for the developers as well, because I think they get more percentages Correct. at the yeah. Epic Games Store. So yeah. Oh, yeah. that's also something but, that is being taken into account. And also, if there's more competition on the market, then maybe we can get our games a little bit cheaper. You know, yeah. if they, and, they sell it on Steam a bit cheaper or they sell on the Epic Games Store a bit cheaper. And, and, and also something I should not forget, and that's maybe more interesting for us, is that uh, Epic Games is working on this system where a developer can give a key to a content creator they play the game, and in the end, they share a little bit of revenue in that case. Right now, when we, you know, uh, play a game, then in the end, you know, all the sales go to the developer and they shoot. But with the Epic Games Store, they have this ecosystem that works for everyone, for the consumer, for the content creators, and for the developer, where we could yeah. give you a discount for a game, 20% off, like what they do with Fortnite, right, with these codes. But then... I think like I would be totally interested in that. So I think Epic Games is definitely going to be a, a big player here. Yeah, they didn't. But they didn't. They didn't come up with that idea. I don't know who did, but Twitch had it for their partners um, for about the last two years. So that's actually it's not a new concept. Oh. But the fact that they're bundling into a platform that has VR titles mm. is new. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Good. Good points. Oh, see. Good points. I like this. We got. I can tell the engines are firing on all cylinders this week. This is Damn. good. Join the dark side, join <laughs> Epic Game Store, become a friend, but be my only friend. I think I have like three friends on it. It's very sad. But... Oh boy. All right. So the you next one. Four friends? <laughs> the next one. This is a, a re release. This is a game I played on Oculus Go. It's called Republic. Um, it, is, it is very much um, like Metal Gear Solid, and it's based in a world kind of a. I don't know what the right word is. Um, kind of like a, a, a D Mob world. It's a stealth action game and um, the government is surveilling you. And actually there are cameras like in every room. And so you actually play a character who's hopping from camera to camera as a hacker trying to help this lady get out. Because she starts off in prison and then extends from there. This game is Why literally- Why is she wearing a garbage bag? <laughs> <laughs> she is That's kind a good of wearing one. a garbage bag. Um, I, I don't know. That doesn't, that has not been answered so far. I'm at chapter two myself, Rowdy. So, um, uh, but it's, Republic is something that really surprised me. It was one of the better Go titles, certainly one of the longer Go titles. I've plugged maybe eight hours in. I'm only on chapter two of five. This is coming uh, to Quest, and it's not much. It's uh, $10.99. I'd say it's definitely worth that price. Mm. I'm curious what the touch control support is going to be like. I've seen it listed already, so apparently that's confirmed. Okay. Um, so it'll be interesting to see. It is a third-person game. Is everything in third person? From a fixed camera. Is everything in third person? N I don't remember anything being in first person, but you're switching between different modes. It's very much like um, one of the like Sam Fisher games in that where you're you know you're going from seeing night vision or there's there's a series of different like okay. lenses that apply but to the world. It's not like Moss where you can use your hands to activate things, pull things. It's more like you just have a gamepad and the Correct. controllers are your gamepad. And it's reflected in the price, no doubt. Yeah, okay. You know, and, so, and, and, hmm, okay, so going back to the suit she's wearing, maybe it's a tin foil suit, so the aliens can't read her mind. <laughs> or the government, <laughs> maybe. But it's yeah. actually really well characterized. <laughs> I, I like the story, how it's been progressing. Um, if you want something that isn't, and again, it's not like a, it's not the kind of game you're gonna coast through. I feel like Moss, you pretty much coast through, it's pretty easy. Yeah. Um, this game has tough segments to it and you will have to play it. You have to be a gamer yeah. to get through this one, which is something I really like. So uh, that's yeah. Republic and that's uh, launching on the 25th. 
Uh, actually, it's been sitting in the upcoming releases, so I don't know what deal they made with Oculus, but it's been sitting there for some time <laughs> waiting for release on, uh, on Thursday. So that's that. Mm. Um, I didn't mention uh, Tetris Effect was out, is actually coming out on the 23rd, Republic 25th, and on the 26th, the fifth and final game I'm covering um, is, oh, drum roll please. This is one we've been waiting for, and I'm going to be very keen to pick your brains on it, lads, which is Wolfen Wolfenstein. Wolfenstein, <laughs> Cyber Wolfenstein. Pilot. Wolfenstein. <laughs> Uh, Wolfenstein Cyber Pilot, which we saw an amazing trailer for last year. You guys have had some gameplay time with this. It looks too, bu too good to be true. Coming in with such a heavyweight IP name for 15 pounds. Um, you know, who likes Nazis? So uh, It always makes me like a little bit like, you know, just like shivers going down my spine where, when I hear like the, the word like big IP and then like only $15. Oh. Yeah. With me, it goes off to like... Oh. I, Halo recruit anyone? I, like, is this gonna be something like that? Like, oh, I, I thought it was like big IP, Nazis, and Panzerhunds. That's what I thought. Panzerhunds. So, so me and Nathy have played this game. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. played it at Gamescom. Uh, you saw it at PAX, right? Uh, I, uh, I played it at E3, and okay. then this E3, I spotted the game again, and they had some new stuff. So, yeah. Um, first of all, what I do want to say is that in the trailer, if you watched the trailer, they say it's a VR experience. So that clears up a lot already. So you know what you can expect in that sense. Although, you know, VR experiences can be solid or average or bad in, in the end. <laughs> but um, so just let me quickly explain you what this game is, because it's not Wolfenstein like you would usually play it. You know, it's not you being this first person uh what was how is it called like blasco peach and, and you have like these these epic guns and you're just going through a castle and stuff like that now it's a total different wolfenstein vibe um you're a hacker and you need to hack into uh german war machines so you have all these famous um you know um machines from all the other games like the Panzerhund and the Citadel. It's like that giant robot with these laser cannons and, and some others too. And you can hack into them and then take control over them to surprise the Nazis. That's basically what it is. Uh, I, I do think there is a story bound to it, but I don't think it's going to matter that much because Wolfenstein is usually more about the violence and not about the story. Although the last two Wolfenstein games were definitely more yeah. about the story. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of what it is. Uh, I, I would just wait and see in this yeah. case, because I, I do think it, 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 it can have a fair chance. It has been laying on the shelf for a while, I feel like. Um, so it's, it's good that it's finally coming out. There isn't that much hype around it. I don't think a lot of people know yep. uh, that it's coming out. Now they know. Um, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I, I don't think it's that bad. It's a seated experience, by the way. And there aren't that many seated experiences. Um, so this this is welcome, where you can ride a Panzerhund or uh, be control of, of of a robot, and and it's a famous IP. So you're in the world of Wolfenstein. So so the only thing I would say from playing it, uh, the demo that I played is I, I could only control the Panzerhund. I've mentioned this on a previous episode. Zim did a really funny accent. You should have checked that out. Uh, but as, as Rowdy would say, it got very repetitious very very quickly. Uh, because you were just doing the same thing, using the flamethrower to take down the Nazis over and over again. So I, I was just really, I just hope that the final game has a lot more variety in the gameplay mechanics uh, to spice it up a little bit. I don't mind that it's going to be short. I think it is going to be relatively short. Yeah. Uh, it's also worth noting that they're releasing it alongside their pancake game, which is Wolfenstein Youngblood. Um, so the two are going to be releasing on the that? 26th, I think. Yeah. It's, so, uh, in the chat, someone was saying that, uh, and I did find it a little bit uh, funny, because uh, if you look at the trailer, it kind of looks like that. It's Elon Musk flamethrower simulator. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, wow. <laughs> that was my favorite but, comment as well. That was good. But no, but no doubt, we'll be talking about this game next week on next week's show, so we can tell yeah. you all about what we think uh, then for sure. Because but when this comes out, give it a go. then we can talk about the next Bethesda game that will be in VR. And, you know, they have been bringing out some very uh, fun stuff so far, right? Blink, yeah. blink, blink. Is this news? Mm. What next Bethesda game? I don't know. Maybe Skyrim. Skyrim uh, VR experience? Skyrim 2. Is is wait, wait, wait. Is it the first uh, VR experience from Bethesda that is uh, well, officially coming Bethesda out with VR in the mind? Because no, I mean, Skyrim no. has been adapted. You for mean built from? Um, 
Doom VFR. Doom, 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 Doom was yeah. uh, Doom ground up. And yeah. although, like this, has been made by Machine Games, Bethesda is the publisher. They don't okay. make games, so Machine Games has never made something VR before. Okay. So, quick question Sorry, for you two lads on this, because I'm curious: Doom VFR or what you've played so so far of Wolfenstein? Um, uh, which one wins? <laughs> uh, Doom VFR so far, I think, because it's got it's got more varied gameplay. I think that's the key. Yeah, just just more more but, time and money went into that. But hopefully Bethesda surprises with Wolfenstein for sure. Okay, so the last two little bits of news I'll just mention uh, in case you missed this: Blood and Truth has a free demo that's landed on PSVR. Amazing. So if you want to get a taste of it, go for it. Uh, from what I've heard, it's kind of the first bits of the game, which actually for me were probably some of the least impressive components of the game. So if you're looking at that and you're like, nah, maybe on the fence, maybe put yourself into the buy category. If you really don't like being on rails and all that, then maybe you should just wait for a sale or so not get it. So what demo are you playing in this case? I'm interested in what they decided to go for. Is it like the first level? First level, yeah. The first level. No, it's, that's a, it's a great level. So yeah, it's a great level. Yeah. yeah. So if you were disappointed about the factor, go to a store, buy a PlayStation VR, and play this for free. Wow, how cheap. <laughs> free entertainment. We like it. We like free. And then the two closed betas I was going to mention, which we, we talked about a little bit earlier, if you didn't catch us earlier on. So there's a closed beta for Battle Wake currently running this weekend, and there's a closed beta running for until the fall. Um, if you got into either of those, again, check your email. It always is terrible. It's an awful feeling when you check your email after a weekend and go, oh, I missed a beta weekend that I was invited no! to. That I don't want to happen to anyone. So there you go. That's my good deed done for the weekend. Um, and with that said, we're actually through the other side of releases for this week. <laughs> wow. One epic week for releases, though. It's wow. great. It's Thank great. You. I welcome that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about our first main topic then. And uh, this is uh, about haptic feedback wrist attachments called TASB. And uh, this news comes uh, from articles written by VentureB and Upload VR. Uh, and these uh, haptic feedback wristbands, they're actually developed by Facebook Reality Labs. And uh, they were unveiled during the World Haptics Conference, which recently took place in Japan. Mm -hmm. Now, although this technology isn't going to replace traditional VR controllers anytime soon, in my opinion, it's kind of interesting that this could be something we're headed towards in the future, you know, with gloves or, you know, finger tracking or this kind of technology with haptics as well. Mm -hmm. Now, these wristbands, they're called TASB, and they sit on your wrists, just like where your watch would sit. And they're designed to provide haptic feedback through the wearer's wrists and hands. So the wristbands themselves, they contain haptic and linear actuators that can send precise vibrations. And also, this is interesting, adjust the tension of the band itself. So the band can actually squeeze your wrist, uh, essentially, and vibrate. Um, and this means that these bands, uh, you can sort of use these and incorporate these sensors to to uh, give you different feedback in different environments, different games. So, for example, if you're shaking someone's hand or you're picking up or manipulating objects or you're pushing buttons, the haptic feedback can be different each time for those uh, actions and give you some some nice feedback. Hmm. These, these bands don't track your fingers, by the way. You still need a, a camera to capture the finger movement or some gloves or something like that, which we've seen Facebook Reality Labs hmm. playing with in the past. Um, but to give you some good examples of how this could be used and how it's kind of interesting hmm. is that if we look at current good examples of interesting use cases of haptics that we have access to right now. So a great one that I sort of wanted to highlight was like on the iPhone 7 or iPhone 8, for example, okay. you know, you've got the the, uh, the tactile button. It's, it's got like a home button in the middle, but it's not actually a button that moves. You just put your thumb on it and the haptics and vibrations simulate the button push. But it's so um, realistic feeling that you feel like it's a button push, even though it's actually not. And that's kind of where I think they're going with this technology. Hmm. Same sort of thing with the Joy-Cons uh, for the Nintendo Switch, if you think yeah, about that. like. Great. The way they implement the HD rumble in those controllers, you know, they, ac they actually can replicate the feeling of marbles rolling around 
as if they're in the Joy-Con, but it's all just done by rumble haptics, like clever vibrations. Wait, is it is it like when I I do that handshake with that robot in the Aperture Hand Lab? Exactly. Yeah, similar sort of thing. Oh, mm -hmm. Really clever haptics, really clever vibrations, and when you incorporate them, it can make for very immersive experiences. So we have some uh, input from the chat as well. Uh, the Are you sure that they go on the wrist? <laughs> <laughs> the FA, Jeremy oh, Fasola asking, do they have a similar thing for lower parts? <laughs> I'm, I'm curious here, Mike, though, to get away uh, from the, my, my CD brethren. Um, I'm really curious. So uh, they're meant to replace a controller or augment the experience with a controller? So this is the thing. It's not clear right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. Personally, I, you know, I don't think these are ever going to replace controllers because as gamers, we love controllers. We love to physically hold controllers, uh, you know, with the, the, the Oculus Touch and the index controllers. We love that, that, that physical interaction. Um, however, I do think it does have its use case. Uh, so in combination with finger tracking, like I said, because it can't track the fingers on its own, um, it could be great for social apps. So like, like I said, like shaking someone's hand, um, just gesturing in game. And it could be great for navigating UI uh, and that sort of tactile feedback, navigating UI and consuming mm -hmm. media whilst in these like immersive worlds. And this is kind of interesting because I was thinking about this and it's obviously Facebook reality labs that have developed this. Mm -hmm. And as we know, just recently, uh, Oculus announced uh, for OC6, which is coming up in September, which is their yearly event where they uh, they talk about their latest technologies. They teased about AR, and it kind of got me thinking. I wonder if this is going to be more towards the AR market, and that could make it kind of interesting hmm. um, because AR, generally, from what we've seen so far with Hololens and Magic Leap, it has finger tracking built into it. So if a, an Oculus AR headset had the same technology, you could wear these wristbands and then you'd also get the tactile feedback uh, okay. from this experience. That's there. what I was thinking, like, because uh, the, the way that I see it still, I see like, you know, vibrations and rumble because they're still fake. Uh, I see them more as like ways of giving feedback to the user when uh, you've touched something or uh, yeah. you've, you've pressed something or you hit something rather than uh, increasing immersiveness or, 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 or like creating the uh, like the feeling that you're mm. actually physically touching a button or like yeah. I still think that that is more in that kind of direction. It's more background. It's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like reassurance that yeah, you've done yeah. what you've wanted to do. Um, yeah. and, th and this is where I kind of thought maybe this isn't going to be for VR. Maybe this is going to be mm. for an upcoming Oculus AR project. Uh, it would make more sense uh, in that sense. Yeah. Uh, okay, okay. Hypervisor with AR, like if I can, you can just like touch things in this in space and you, you see through mask. Oh my god! Minority yeah. Report. <laughs> exactly. This is exactly what I'm, I'm feeling because in yeah. Minority Report they do that whole kind of raised elevated <sighs> yeah. button thing with the with the tactile feedback. Hugging, We've seen uh, it in other films. Hugging uh, Henry the Hedgehog. Yeah, yeah, and and this is the thing. Like I, I don't see it right now. Certainly in the VR market space right now because. It's predominantly for gaming. Uh, and I think like gamers, like I said, prefer physical controllers. This is why I think this may be a bit of a tease at what they might be doing with the AR scene. Uh, and that's why I think it's kind of interesting. Um, like I said, this was announced in Japan, uh, like a haptic okay. event. And a paper all mm. about the research that was done is actually going to be published by Facebook Reality Labs in the coming weeks. Mm. Um, interesting. And I just thought it was interesting because we've, we've not seen that before uh, from them. Uh, you know, this kind of idea that it could squeeze your wrist and, and add vibration to feel like you're getting this tactile mm -hmm. feedback yeah. from an augmented world, maybe. Yeah, no. And, and in the AR space, there is so much to explore, you know, uh, where uh, Magic Leap has this remote. Um, this could also be a way to find out if it works or not. Uh, someone in the yeah. chat says, uh, uh, yeah, this is a, a good one. Mushrooms will always be cheaper than any AR device. <laughs> well, that's, that's true. Let's say, let's say for maybe the upcoming, I don't know how many years, but yeah, no, that's correct. But I, I think <laughs> so, so, certainly with AR, the, this technology has a better place. I think it's more suited to this technology mm. because, like you said, with the Hololens and the Magic Leap right now, you have little remotes. Um, I know Hololens is is more aimed at finger tracking as well and, yeah. and manipulation through UI through hand gestures. Mm. So yeah, maybe this is a good sign that that's the way that things are going to be going and you'll get that tactile feedback as well. I just want to echo what Nathie said actually because I think that for social again VR will explode when you have like a quorum when it comes to social engagement. When people start meeting each other, 
working together in a virtualized environment, that's going to propel things forward. It'll be like a catalyst. And the thing that Nathie said was about the handshake with the robot. Like, what, what about handshake with another person who you've met or even just a pat on the shoulder or something like that? Like that, that interaction, even just the handshake, if we focus specifically on the handshake, how important is that mm-hmm. when you meet someone for the first time to feel yeah. their grip? It's a signature. It's actually yeah. like a, a human body signature. And if they can find a way to translate that, transmit that, you know, then both people who are ha- shaking hands are going to love it. And also people who decide to use this device elsewhere are going to love it. So Yeah, and I, I think the key for AR is to have it so your hands are free mm. to manipulate real world ob- objects at the same time. Um, and, I, you know, that, that's where I kind of see the future with like Google and all these big companies creating AR glasses like Apple, for example. You know, we talked about manipulating Lego and augmenting that Lego experience. We talked about that before as well. But it it was the tactile feedback that was missing from that experience. So I'm glad that they've kind of done the research and they're kind of looking at that and little areas and exploring ways to implement that as well. So I thought it was interesting, worth mentioning on the show. Uh, It'll be super interesting to see what Oculus bring to the table in September. So are are they looking at other like tactile options rather than like Rumble? Because I, I always see Rumble more as like, you know, for feedback or like you know to give some some kind of control but like mm. like i don't know like air or like air cushions or like uh, something like that that is a little bit more no or... so, so like i said this 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 uh uh tapsy is, is basically just rumble and it's also got a uh, grip so it grips your wrist yeah. as well oh, tightens cool. and loosens yeah. um and and that can give you different <laughs> sensations <laughs> no, that's not what i was thinking ratty ratty i'll so tell you what space. i was thinking I was thinking of the, the sense band, and I was thinking of asphyxiation <laughs> and pain, because some people wow. like that. So Someone was uh, already saying that in the chat as well, like uh, there's going to be some kind of idiot that's going to put that around his uh, neck and then... Uh... <laughs> like the Asana band from uh, Kiss Me First. That's right? what I was trying to say, the Asana band, yeah. Which I still am sad, it's not a thing. Like something that actually makes you um, feel it yeah. when you've cut your fingers off and, I don't know. I think we're going to see some other handshakes in this case. <laughs> so, yeah, that is uh, Facebook Reality Labs working on some interesting stuff. You know, last last few episodes ago, we talked about their sort of face tracking technology to make mm. uh, interactions in VR more realistic. So it is really interesting to see what's coming out of this Facebook Reality Labs development sort of place. Uh, so, yeah, we'll obviously report more when we hear more, but I thought it was interesting to kind of talk about that and sort of give you a glimpse of what might yeah. uh, be coming in the future. Every time we have this exciting new tech and then in the chat, and we also were trying to abuse it in this yeah. dumb way again, where the, we're like this... Perverse. Caveman, where yeah. it is caveman, like, hey, what can we do with this? You know? But I don't think it's abuse. I, the way I look at it is, like, what occurs <laughs> no. to you when you're thinking about it straight away? What are people actually going to do about it? Yeah, and, no, of course they will. It's it, it's great to think of the, the wonderful, colorful spectrum of the rainbow of humanity. We, yeah, we need... We're basically giving Charlie Brooker some ideas for a future episode of Black Mirror right Absolutely. now. That's basically what we're doing. Absolutely. Also, Martin Risby said that he recently saw a video about the glove that also used air pockets to provide different tactile feedback yeah. because it can affect different pressure and areas on the hand. So there are there are other companies yeah. probably that are working on different tactile solutions. Yeah, for sure. Like there's there's loads of companies out there working for like restricting hand movement and gloves and, and all sorts of stuff. But it's just interesting to see yeah. what will be the stando defecto in the future, but it's only guessing right now. One question, guys. Um, I'm curious, is there anything today, as a guy who likes tactile experiences and things where you can feel, is there anything today that you've interacted with that's AR where you've had some manner of feedback? I don't care if it's gloves, fancy underpants, I, I don't care, but like any? Have you have you, have you you played in any in a show floor? Feedback in a, in, uh, in a haptic in way. In AR, you mean. yeah, so an AR experience whether it be on a phone with special uh, glasses on, even like a HoloLens thing, any of them with tactile or haptic feedback in any shape or form? You get a little bit of uh, like rumble in the like Magic Leap controller, but it, okay. it's not really like what we're talking about. Yeah. Okay. I've, I've tried a glove uh, that did heat and cold, but it wasn't really an AR. I, it was I, more like a, yeah. to show you the sensation. I, 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 did, I do know there are like these location based experiences with the uh, HoloLens where you can, you know, walk around in a landscape and it's, it's, it's mixed reality in, in some way. Huh. And, and also that you can touch things and that they interact in some ways. When I was at E3, they had like this, this forest 
with like a, a lake and and some mushrooms and rocks and all kinds of stuff and people were walking around there with a hololens on just uh staring at things and pointing at things so those are you know upcoming but again ar is super you know new okay so let's talk about our final topic of today and that is some rumored specs for the psvr and this is kind of a bit of a fun one don't get don't take this oh, one too oh, 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 oh excitement excitement <laughs> Um, we, we mentioned on a previous episode of the podcast, actually, that in an interview with credible tech news outlet Wired, Sony stated that the next generation PlayStation will likely release in 2020 and it will be backwards compatible with the current generation PSVR. So that's great news for current PSVR owners. Although, of course, there is likely going to be a new PSVR 2 headset that launches alongside the new console as well, in my opinion. Um, so some news outlets, uh, specifically a website called Inverse, uh, has got some rumored specs for the PSVR 2, and they've claimed to have gotten this information from patents that have been submitted by Sony, and then loads of other websites, <laughs> even really credible ones like GamesRadar, jumped on all this information and just made stories of their own based on this information being basically fact in their mind. Um, but let's, let's, let's have a bit of fun with this. Let's go through each one of these supposed spec leaks and see what we think and whether we think it's likely or not. So take this with a huge grain of salt. This is by no means concrete, concrete information. This is just us having a bit of fun. Not a press release from Sony Entertainment. Got it. No. First up, resolution. Apparently, new PSVR 2 will sport a combined resolution of 2560 by 1440 pixels. So that's 1280 by 1440 pixels per eye, running at 120 hertz. Now, this is probably the only part of this that is actually probably believable, um, because it is an increase over the current 1920 by 1080 display in the PSVR, yep. which also can run at 120 hertz. Mm. Um, oh, and okay. it would only some games, right? And it's only some games. And it's interpolated, right? Is it uh, not yeah. interpolated? Uh, sometimes it's 60 hertz doubled, essentially. Yeah, yeah. Um, but this would put it on par with the current Rift S and Go hmm. okay. resolution and display. So that oh. kind of is, it, it, it's believable. It's like, yeah, okay, I'd be happy with that. You know, in the end, I don't really care about that that much. As long as the sweet spot is bigger than, than the one we have now, I'm, I'm good to go. Okay. Okay, so prepare to get triggered, because this is where things start going. Uh-oh. Here we go. Uh-oh. So uh, Inverse, this website, <laughs> state that the new headset, PSVR 2, will have 220-degree field of view. No. <laughs> no. So, uh, on a PlayStation, s sale, yeah. sold to consumers. So th this, is, this is where things start getting but, crazy, but, like I said. Well, uh, you, leak, you leak something, and this is what you come up with. Right. It, you it make up better. a story and you come up with this. It gets even better, believe it or not. Okay. Uh, but this is obviously, you know, this field of view is crazy. It's wider than... I still like it. I still like it, though. It's a nice but, field of view. The thing is, we know <laughs> with these super wide field of views, it, 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 it's problematic. But it's this is like, Sony. This is Sony, Mike. Yeah, they're, they're what not if, What if? What if, Mike? What if? They're wizards, but they're not that, They're not Gandalf level wizards. Put it that way. <laughs> level 100 <laughs> wizards. <laughs> no. Um, because the problem is, if you stretch 2560 by 1440 across 200 <laughs> degrees, <laughs> you're getting like potato quality uh, visuals there. So I, I, it's just but very unrealistic. It, it's probably going to be like with eye tracking, dynamic eye tracking, so that they can only have like a small <laughs> amount. Of, that's still well, going to come, right? Yeah, maybe. Well, yeah. It's funny that you should say that, right? Oh, God, no. They, they, Seriously. They also, they also state that the headset will support eye tracking. Yeah. yeah. Now, although eye tracking isn't beyond the realms of possibility, this technology is very, very expensive. You know, the Vive Pro Eye is the only consumer available headset on the market right now that has eye tracking integrated into mm. the headset. And it's okay. very right. expensive. And it's it's for B two B. It's not even for gamers, right? Is now. that is that an also dynamic eye tracking that they have in that one? Uh, so dynamic foveated rendering isn't available yet, as far as yeah. I'm aware. But the, it's I just mean, for um, a fixed foveated rendering, for example, in the Oculus Go. Exactly, but mm. with dynamic, it, it it needs eye tracking to know where your eyes are looking. Yeah. On the fly. Uh, I think with the Vive Pro Eye, it's just for data analysis. Yeah. Because, I'm curious uh, about this though. Can't you you could do software-based eye tracking, right? 
No. Yeah, I think that is what Oculus showed in OC5 exactly. recently. Yeah, um, yeah. So, as but, opposed to what we've seen, and I can't remember the headset now, but optical, you know, you've got moving parts that are actually tracking your eyeballs and then moving the screens around in physical format. I thought that still needed eye tracking modules, though. I'm pretty sure oh, it yeah. did. It's yeah, it for yeah. depth. Depth of field. So what I'm what I'm saying here, Mike, is um, would it be possible? Again, we're talking about the conceivability of a yeah. PSVR two yeah. with a PS five yeah, yeah, yeah. having this. I, I think it's in the realm of possibility that they could have software based eye tracking in there in that headset. I don't believe the previous stat we were just talking about, but this one maybe. Well, well there's some, I think there's, it's unlikely. Well, the, yeah. the, in the end, I also need to mention that in the end we don't know what the PlayStation itself is going to rock what you know technology it's going to have in terms of yeah, like a it, GPU as well. Like we don't know what GPU goes into into this next PlayStation. But, but we, we can we can be fairly sure that it's not going to beat current PCs, right? Yeah. But if it's heavily optimized, like just like the Quest, it can do some amazing things. And we do know from like the Gran Turismo developer, which we mentioned on a previous episode, he's very excited for Gran Turismo coming to VR potentially. And yeah. also when they talked about the PlayStation 5 that's in development, VR was a part of it that they highlighted would improve mm. significantly. Um, obviously the benefit of eye tracking would be that it would have automatic IPD adjustment and it would save on performance using dynamic. Well, let's also not forget that there is gonna be like a significant processor hit from eye tracking as well. Huh? Like, yeah, uh, of course. It, the, there's so much data that is coming in there, and like you know, millisecond accuracy. That uh, yeah. I, th I don't, I don't know if, of a, if a processor currently in the PlayStation would be able to do something like that. Yeah. So you ready for the next? Ready for more? There's Please. More. This is fun. Uh, so Inverse also state that it will be wireless, <laughs> with a five-hour battery life. Um, I would kind of welcome a wireless PSVR. Uh, just you know, from using the Quest a lot. Being free is is very liberating. I've said this before about wireless headsets. You know, using TPCast and the Vive wireless adapter is very freeing as well, but is very CPU intensive. So that's why we don't no. use them mm. for recording purposes. I don't, I don't know no. about that. Like Jesus. So so which of the two modes are you talking? Are you talking we're beaming data at high bandwidth, or we're just we've got a, basically a port and play plug in PSVR two that charges for five hours, and then you're walking around like it's a Quest. No, so it, it needs to be tethered to your PC, but uh, to your P, PSV, PlayStation Five, <laughs> but just wirelessly. That's what they're saying. Wow! So, so just I want to buy. To... I want this headset now. Well, you're I, selling I think it. That is actually more plausible, yeah, because I do think yeah. that that PlayStation yeah. to go forward is that they're going to go and try to develop something wireless. I mean, uh, they don't. They... Done it with, their, with their with their wireless module as well. So why I, would I, I don't I that? don't see that happen right now. What I do see happen is that it's uh, an MR headset because I don't want to do front facing anymore. Mm, yeah, and I don't think anyone else wants that anymore. I agree no. with Nathy on no. that point. And if it's then mixed reality, you still want to tether it to, uh, I think. So just to quickly summarize before we go any further, deeper. They say 2560 by 1440p resolution at 20, 120 hertz, 220 <laughs> degrees field of view, wireless with eye tracking. Guess how much <laughs> they think this headset's going to cost? Twenty nine bucks. Uh, I don't know, a thousand. They reckon this is going to cost 250 US dollars. Oh my God, for <laughs> God's sakes, Jesus. <laughs> and wow. uh, of course, like I said at the beginning, you know, this is complete rubbish. 250 um, bucks <laughs> for all that. But isn't but it this, amazing to be someone who comes up with this and is like, you know, I'm just going to throw this out there. People are going to be triggered anyway. And mm -hmm. then we're talking about it on this show and are just having fun. I guess so. I guess next, so. next week, next week, next week we're sitting here. Uh, so uh, yeah, PlayStation and <laughs> PlayStation. Well, I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> well, I'm not going to bring up this one story about you know Valve and this uh, special tracking they had, but I don't think we want to have our own version of that. So <laughs> exactly. please, <laughs> please don't. But I think I think really the moral of this story and and where I'm getting at with this is that I think it's really funny and it highlights how major game websites really just have no idea about VR or the limits of what's possible with the technology right now. Mm -hmm. Like Games Radar is, I would say, a pretty legit website. It's, it's been around and a long time. To, to just go and 
post this as a story and say this fancy new PSVR 2 is going to be 250 bucks with all these amazing features <laughs> is just straight up ridiculous. Um, but these so websites, just... these websites need to survive, Mike. Where you clickbait, they make funny articles that don't make any sense. <laughs> How very dare you! I never clickbait. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, let's let's just have a look at your channel. All right, I'm just pulling up Mike's channel here. One second. What does this say? <laughs> 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 Clickbait alert. Um, but I think it's important as well to dispel the rumor because in today's day and age, and we all know this, um, you know, it's very easy to hear something and almost take it on board as fact before knowing if the story has any merit. Because maybe yeah. you're too busy or yeah. whatever. So it's, it's good that you brought this up. I think it's an important topic for us to, to speak about. <laughs> I did hear that there were some patent details that had been released. I haven't looked at them myself. Yeah. Was that part of this? story yeah ex exactly but as we know with patents you know companies commits so can submit patents for anything All the time. um it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be a final product no. um but interestingly you know i just thought it was interesting a little bit of fun to kind of round up the show but while we're at it why don't we maybe just talk about one thing we'd like to see in the next generation psvr because i think that'd be kind of interesting sure. maybe the chat can join in too and you can put your suggestions in the chat and we can read them out um because out of all these amazing you know upgrades they don't mention two fundamental really important yeah. things so let's see if one of us brings those up so i'll that is I'll, the mixed reality one of course yeah like nathan mentioned the tracking it needs better tracking uh is is a key yeah. part of the next generation I want of new PS4. controllers new controllers oh, yeah. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah 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 that's the only and, thing Rowdy in a in a mind meld moment read my mind and knew exactly what to say. So well done, Rowdy. Yeah, of course. The second super important uh, upgrade. And, and those, those are connected with each other in the end. Yeah, a new controller design is badly needed. Um, what about you, Zim? What would you want in a next gen PSVR? I actually like the move controllers, and I started off hating them on the shelf. I was like, I, these these I, to I, I me. Really do, uh, Zim. I know I know I knew there was this was gonna happen. I knew you were gonna say it to like them. <laughs> And they're great, but it took me fucking 45 minutes for me to realize in Skyrim how that they, they actually worked. Like they're, the controllers are, I mean, they're they're good enough, magical. but they're not okay, good. This, magical. Six this, years old, and they made it work for VR. Exactly. And it works very well for VR. And I'll tell you, I'm going out. I've said this before. I like these controllers better than the Vive, the original Vive ones. <laughs> no still, way. Yeah, no 100%. Way. 100%. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 100%. You can laugh as much as you like. I'm entitled to my fucking opinion. <laughs> and it's that these are better okay, okay. for a number of reasons. One of the reasons is that they're curvaceous like a woman. <laughs> and they and there's a serious point behind this. They don't fly out of your hand. Have you ever had a projectile vibe wand? Because those are fucking. They're, they're like. Uh, I, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you that. I'm gonna give you one thing. I like to play these. Like I like to play Beat Saber with these controllers. These were my favorite controllers to play Beat Saber with. That's all I'm gonna say. But the rest, they are really no, good for Beat you. Saber. Yeah, they have. Look, look, they have. Um, they have. Oh yeah, the haptics. Special... The haptics are very strong in them too. But I'm like Rowdy, right? They are limited. They are definitely limited. They need to be redesigned. My ask, however, following probably Oculus's path with like the Rift S, is I've been running the instructional setup video for the PSVR One, right? The number of cables and boxes and boxes and connections and boxes. The oh, yeah. setup is a spaghetti setup. Get rid of all of that. I want two cables at most. Yeah. Headset, cable going to a box, maybe to the but, PlayStation. Nothing more than that, please. Yeah. But, the, but the weird part is, it's still one of the most easiest setups you can have in VR. And all the people I spoke to, that uh, had a, P a PlayStation VR, I, I never heard them complain about that part. It was always like, yeah, I kind of got sick of like the way, you know, the visuals come by mm -hmm. and they were more talking about that. But in the end, setup wise, I, if you I, use the manual, it's like, there are a lot of cables, I'm not gonna lie, but the but setup, the manual they use is super easy. Having a lot of cables, because even setting up a PlayStation that's, in general that's also is really true. like- That is also true. But the other thing I gotta say about these guys, my last point about these controllers, where Oculus also falls down. I love the fact that the part where you're like loading guns or whatever together, they're soft. You know, these are soft balls. These are not, I, I initially, when I saw these before, I was like, I didn't realize that they were just squidgy rubber balls. And the yeah. fact that they are is super nice because if you hit something or someone, yeah. you don't hurt them. And the chances of you actually hitting someone with the physical controller, there's almost no plastic, well, they, you know, that are, you're gonna do They that. are definitely made to be used. Yeah, compared. and then Sony gets it. That's the thing. Sony gets that kind of stuff. So I'm really curious what comes next. 
after those yeah, yeah, funky and, controllers. And I, I like, I'm gonna defend Zim a little bit here with, with these controllers. They're also very good because of the fact that they're super simple in design. So everyone who just grabs them, they're very easy to understand. Well, when you demo the, super rowdy. the, the index <laughs> controllers or others, it's still quite complicated for people. I think these are the easiest ones yeah. to just, you can only grab them in one way with these buttons yeah. and that's it. No, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not joking here, I'm serious. <laughs> Hey, we've got some great questions from the chat. Yeah, like, great. first off, like, uh, we got um, a lot of people also agreeing with Zim, saying that anything is better than the original Vive ones. Yeah. Now, I don't think that that's a fair point then. Uh, but also the same person is saying that Zim is probably suffering from severe Stockholm syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> and, no, 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 look, 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 look. It has no thumbstick. What the fuck? Like, <laughs> yeah, but you know what? Yeah, they're Ross consistent. translation said, he also found other uses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Also, the grip button on the side is next to useless. Yeah. The grip button on the side. The, the grip and then we, the <laughs> we, we, I, I saved the best for last. We have uh, Paradise Decay asking, uh, Zim, can you squeeze those balls on the top? Yes, you can. <laughs> just like that. I just, what I hate about the controllers the most is the drifting you have. Yeah. You know, that's the yeah. thing yeah. that annoys me. Um, it's solvable if you have like this crazy dark setup because that's the funny part. If I play with my PlayStation VR and I complain about drifting, then the uh, PlayStation VR community is very, you know, uh, um, nice to help me out with that. But sometimes I'm like, do I really need to play in complete mm -hmm. darkness to make it happen? The first time, I played with the PSVR and Jump Simulator. You have my face cam in my video. It's completely dark. You only see my headset and these two controllers, uh, and, and that's about it. But I don't know. It's what they made is still good, and yeah. these controllers are ancient, super the ancient. But they do the trick. Yeah, they do the, the problem trick. I the problem I have with these controllers is that is I don't find them very intuitive. Like I don't find the controls on them very intuitive for a VR game. Like what I want is so I want indeed, right. like I want to go to finger tracking and all these kind of things so that controls become more intuitive, that you don't need to click a button to pick something up. No, you physically duck and oh, you yeah. pick it up with your hands. That's that's the kind of way that I want to go to. And that's why I, that's the main reason why I say I want to see new controllers. Oh, for anyone who's ever like affected about with these things, I, I, I want to point something out. Like you, you play Doom VFR with this, it's lovely, except for until you realize that for movement, right, you've got the trigger. It's obvious what that does. You've mm. got the action button in the middle. And yeah. then these four are yeah. your are equivalent of WASDA. So one of these is forward motion. One of them, two, <laughs> the two of them are left and right. And one of them is backwards. Which one? It's but, up to you. Oh. Okay, okay. <laughs> but wait, 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 wait. So Mike, Mike was, Mike was talking about what we want to see with the next PlayStation VR. And all we talk about is why these controllers are still super good. I'll, no. In the end, we all want to see new controllers though, no, right? Do, or you want to see the same ones. I don't like them. Imagine this reveal and it's like, Hey, we have a new PlayStation VR with this crazy 330 field of view, and we still have the same controllers. No. Amazing! And then Zim is like, "Oh yes, yes, yes!" I will oh, not exciting, be applauding. Exciting. Uh, no, that's you know, where all my I, loyalty ends. All I want is Ape Escape VR. That's all I want. Okay. Oh my god. So, <laughs> enough, enough. Oh my god. I feel like every single topic <laughs> we talked about today has triggered some like. You know, this is a discussion. This this is why we enjoyed that that one podcast so much without you because you're the one that usually stops. He's <laughs> <laughs> the school teacher. From, uh, you know, it, it's literally like herding cats. It is. It's like the, you just can't control them. Uh, um, shut up, Mike. So let, let's let's just Mike, 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 you party pooper. I know, right? <laughs> I've always been like, you know, got to keep a lid on these guys. Um, let's ask the chat some questions while we round up the show. Uh, hopefully you've all enjoyed this show. We've talked about loads of stuff. We've got triggered oh. about loads of stuff. We've talked about Facebook Reality Labs, Tasby Risk uh, Bands. We've talked about Crisis Brigade. We've talked about Vertigo 2, games releasing next week, uh, PSVR, fake news, <laughs> Minecraft, everything. So if you've enjoyed it, yeah, leave a like on the video. Make sure you're subscribed as well. Uh, thank you for everyone that's joined us live in Big Screen TV. I'm super intrigued if it's all worked. Yeah, thank so you. Johnny Wells, who's a very regular viewer, just said, my quest died in Big Screen at one hour, 51 minutes. So it sounds oh, like oh, battery oh, drain. That's our fault. That is completely our fault for keep oh, on rambling on. Yeah, that's going to be a real problem. Sorry for, for all of you that your quests have died or are dying. Uh, but I hope you've enjoyed it anyway. If you're watching it in a PTVR headset, I'd love it if you took some pics 
pictures of like who you're with right now in big screen TV and us on the screen and just uh, post them at, at, at F Reality uh, Crew on Twitter. We'd love to see the pictures. Uh, super intrigued how it performs on big screen TV. If it does well, then uh, they'll continue to be showing up every week. So let us know. Let the developers of big screen know as well if you enjoyed it in big screen TV. Yeah. Uh, but yes. of course, we always appreciate the, the viewers that join us live on Facebook, Twitch, and uh, YouTube as well. And for those that listen to the audio version of the show, because we put a lot of extra work into that version yeah. of the show, so it sounds much better. Um, but yeah, if you've got any questions, I'll just recap the show times and then just check them in the chat and we'll read a couple out before we say goodbye. So just a reminder, it's uh, live streamed every Saturday uh, at 7 p.m. in Europe, 6 p.m. in the UK, and 12 midday in Central US. So you won't mm. miss the show. And we are on Spotify right now. And on Spotify. We literally added this it this week as a request from our listeners. Uh, so if you subscribe yeah. to Spotify, it's on there as well. I'm, I'm a big fan of Spotify. I'm going to listen to the show through Spotify, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, the audio version is great. I, I love listening to it back. That's weird, uh, though. When I'm on a train journey it's somewhere. It's like listening to yourself once I again. I know. But the thing is, I, I still find it interesting. I still find it funny to listen to. Uh, I think that's a good testament of a, of a funny show that we all have diverse yeah. opinions and we have a lot of fun with it. And, and, and it's a way for us to also improve over time to, you know, listen to ourselves like, hmm, maybe I, uh, I should talk more about that next episode or do this or do that yeah. or maybe not do something. So anymore. that was the pivotal I, uh, point when I the disagree. entire audience came against me when I just mentioned two specialized controllers that were that, just that, fantastic. That's why when I'm listening to it, I always go, I need to keep a lid on these lads. Like... <laughs> <laughs> that's why that's why you are the host in the end if i was yeah. the host i would have been like zim and rowdy go on just talk all, yeah. about all these rumors let's have fun four hours later they're still going. <laughs> yeah. eight, eight yeah, hours true. later okay yeah so let's, let's go for some questions from the chat then yeah sure uh let's see <laughs> oh, uh, one one question was um, specifically, I, I saw this several times earlier on, and I saw it just recently here. They were asking about uh, chat appearing in the big screen edition. And I think the way the big screen currently works, you have one source feed, and, and if unless we bake the chat in, um, as people normally do if they're casting or whatever, um, a live stream, I don't think you'll be able to see chat. So unless we can, unless there, unless you guys know of a special way that Big Screen has already engineered for a second source, then I, I think no. our hands are tied. I, th I think the great thing, especially watching it in Big Screen, is to promote you chatting amongst the eight people that are in the room with you, yeah. if there's eight people there. You know, like have that discussion between you. Yeah. It is an open forum after all. It's just a shame that there's no way to get those messages back out to us. Um, but it's just a, very, a test right now. Maybe we can implement some features in the future if, uh, if, if it becomes popular enough on Big oh, yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah. Also, someone says, uh, I have an eight hour shift ahead, so talk away. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that's the great thing. You can listen to the show when you're doing anything. It's, it's the same with any podcast. That's why I love podcasts so much. Um, but yeah. Oh, that's actually a great tip from, uh, from Flipper's side. If people want to see the chat, they can actually pull up a second screen uh, in a in big screen and have the uh, the YouTube chat just on that screen. That's a great idea. If you're on a PC VR headset, you can certainly do that. Um, not yeah. so much with the Quest. Um, but yeah, you can have a pop-up window. You can great flip idea. to the browser. If chat isn't going, unfortunately, our chat is pretty fast. If chat isn't going too fast, you can always swap between apps, which is going to be really annoying. But if you're yeah. really into chat, like I know some yeah. people are, like they care about chat almost more than the show, um, that which is fine. Um, yeah then that's an option as well. It's a, it's an awkward one, but obviously we need a uh, first party solution at some stage. Yeah. All yeah. right. Well, great. Thank you for joining us live wherever you've watched this or if you're watching the audio version. We really, really appreciate you all. We'll be back next week, as always, at the usual time. Have a great week in VR. We'll be back, of course, talking about Cyberpilot, no doubt, next week. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Until then, bye-bye for now. Take care. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Get out of here. <laughs>